Second, Devin Ryan. And the lead is Lloyd Francis. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, that uh, it's wonderful, really, that Matt came out. Uh, I think he did call late Alberta to his hat. Test, test. Okay, folks, here we are now. Harold Walters won the draw. Playoffs with Sammy. Top German players. How to be here with you, Mark, today? It looks like um, Team McNeil Amswood is not worried at all right now, and they've um, went right for the center line guard, so they're starting offensive play. And Harold not worried, also putting up the corner guard right away. I'm going to try to put a couple of points on the court. Holds well, Sam. Absolutely, doesn't look like we're going to be getting a hit, 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 hit blank. Well, it doesn't appear we're going to have a blank hand already, and there's only two rocks thrown. Time team, home team. Junior final was lost in 2020. They had a great game against uh, uh, Team Manitoba 2. It was skipped by Jack Gauthier. That was in Langley. Yeah, Aaron's a great lead. I had the opportunity to play with him last year in the uh, under-21 uh, provincials and national event. And uh, solid guy, great, uh, great teammate, great communicator, great thrower. Just to give a rundown on the Evan Curley, third. Oh, uh, Scott Eaton. Player. Looks like comes down and just falls off at a hit. Uh, land back in there. The yellow back a six. There's a couple options here, Mark. You know, they could they could look at just freezing down to the uh, blue rock, or they could play a little hack weight. What's your preference here? I'd like to just draw, and if you put my my neck. Your tolerance might be a little tight and a little heavy. Right here. I was given opportunity here to Harold uh, to. <laughs> Freeze went on to that blue rock and put apply some pressure here early in the first end. He also looks to be on a similar path that Graham's Rock just followed. A little adrenaline here early in the first end of this tankard, first game of this tankard and It has. Definitely. 
it's on a couple talking about. We're gonna go with the hog to hog split for this one. What are we expecting, Mark? Around fifteen and a half for a nice draw, you think? You can see this rock is already on a much better line. Weight looks a lot better. Got a 15.9 on this one, Mark. Yep. Trish is calling the the uh, cross to face double here. Sorry, folks, we have a little uh, IT issue. The IT issue here, uh, myself and Glenn are obviously not the, on the uh, technical here. But we are back to provide this first in. Uh, so we're going for a double takeout here, Mark. Starting to curl. I don't think he might jam it. And That's that, good effort, uh, Mark. Just a little thick on the second rock there. They're going to stick him behind that guard, so it gives a great opportunity for uh, McNeil Lambswood here to well, Lambswood, uh, hit and roll away. Lambswood, well, he can't roll in now because that blue rock stops him from rolling in on top of it. So he's going to try to hit and roll as a wing and, and lie to that way. I believe they call this a junior deuce, do they? Uh, well, I'm a senior. I call it just a deuce. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a junior deuce to you. <laughs> Amateur call here with the weight choice, uh, nice downboard weight. Looks like, as opposed to pumping these, these these guys are mature veteran players now, and they know that uh, we don't need to be pumping them down the ice anymore. We can play nice control weight, get our sweepers involved. Absolutely, you'll make a lot more rocks with that down weight and and utilize your sweepers. It, it, for one, you draw four players in on every shot, as opposed to just you and the person holding the broom if you're going to pump it down. Harold. As worth noting too here with this uh, skip you're seeing calling the shot, Harold Walters, ice tech at the St. John's Curling Club. And uh, actually he's been in what curling 25 years, he said, and this is his first ever it's his first men's tank. provincial yeah, Harold is the ice tech, the uh, chief ice tech and the general manager at the St. John's Curling Club. But uh, he's uh, obviously a, a seasoned player. He's, he's uh, won a provincial mixed and played in the mixed in 2018, I believe, uh, with a local team. And uh, now he's in his first tankard. This looks like he might get something here. No, nope. just got the uh, just got the peel on the top one. Not sure if the ice was a little tighter or if uh, Scott Eaton got it going a little bit. But that seemed to curl a bit more on that turn. And when you say got it going, Mark, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, sometimes people slide out. You're supposed to let it go straight at the broom, but sometimes people get a little twist on the release, and they start stared it a little bit before they should and as a result the rock just curls a lot more right. than what uh, they're expecting initial weight judgment there out of aaron feltham is an indication that it might be a little bit heavy but the guys are working this now looking for a nice and tight yeah. three guard maybe a two to three guard yeah i don't think it's going to be heavy i think they pretty they're trying to get it right in the middle of the two of them so he's going to be where he wants to be, stops the double. Yep. And it's a long, it's a long, longer guard now. So Harold, he's thinking about uh, coming down, making a play on the rocks in the forefoot as opposed to the run back. And we're lucky here at the St. John's Curling Club. We got a great ice surface here with lots of curl, lots of good speed. So there's a lot of shots that are possible here, and um, with this hack weight hit and roll, board weight hit and roll, uh, certainly a great possibility. High percentage shot. Well, our ice here is, is like, like you said, Sam, it's extremely good. It's light, quick, loads of curl, both turns, both sides of the sheet, and it's a result of the amount of time and effort that goes into it with, with the uh, Harold and his ice tech team here. And uh, I'm pretty sure most of the members of the St. John's Curling Club are pretty appreciative of the ice quality that we have. Absolutely. But audible here at uh, Harold Walters. We knew the roll in wasn't going to... Wasn't going to quite cut it, so uh, we chose to go roll the outside. Well, now Lambs has a decision. He can hit and lie two and keep the force on, or he could come around and try to squeeze Harold. Personally, I like to come around. Apply some pressure. Apply some pressure. First end, it's a 10-end game. 
Eight end game is a race to the finish. Ten end game, only two more in, Sam, but it's a it's a different uh, game from a uh, strategy point of view. Right. Much more of a marathon, eh? Much more. You haven't got to get all your points in one end. Right. But they're going to, this is a pretty defensive type of call, non-aggressive. Definitely more conservative. But it hits and stays. Harold is still going to come around to the middle. That's the reason I like coming around first. Because with that long guard, even if they make this, that come around tap back is still going to be open. Right. To the Harold, the wide one sure. behind that guard. Trying to get some extra finish here in the end of this. That's a good shot. Yeah, that's a good shot. Well, so right away, with with the, the way the rocks are lined up, it doesn't appear that it's going to be a blank this end for sure. And just as you predicted, Mark, um, the tap back you said was there on the outturn side, and right away Harold is calling for that shot. Well, based on how how uh, Scott Eaton's take up curled, there should be enough enough room there behind that long guard to get around, push that blue rock off the pin and out, and stay behind that guard, which then puts a lot of pressure back on uh, Team Lambswood to get it out. So uh, it's all about you know taking your opportunity to put pressure on the on your opponent. You know, even though this is a long game, ten ends worth. Uh, this is a pretty crucial shot here in the first end. It is indeed. It is indeed. The line looks pretty good. And that's a good freeze. Trying to get some curl here. Lots of space by that guard. So watch the roll. And a nice shot by Harold Walters. Hits and rolls behind a corner. It uh, looks like it's partially exposed for sure, or maybe all of it, or just all of it. And I would say from the hack they got a good three quarters of that rock, Mark. Yeah, I think so too, Sam. May maybe even a little bit more than that. So it looks like Lambswood, Lambswood is going to make a play on it. But is it, they have, nobody's, nobody's played out here before, so a uh, little bit of an educated guess on the ice here. With that ice he's taking, I don't expect that he's throwing a ton of weight. Probably a control weight hit or, yeah. or a solid board. Yeah, I could see, I could even see him throwing a down board closer to a hack weight. But with that ice, I'd say that the down board is a good call. Yep. If this was in the middle of the sheet, I think that ice would be fine for a down hack or a hack weight. But uh, his only danger here now is this happens to run straight. But uh, right. our ice hasn't been that straight out in the wings lately. Up, oh. sweepers point on it. Straight curler on. We're going to be on the front guard here. But does Walters get a break here? And Ryan is going to get a little lucky here that it uh, perfectly guarded that blue rock. He doesn't look like there's going to be an opportunity for three. No, Walters is going to be pretty happy with a draw for two here. First end. Definitely. And as we used to say, Sam, first blood. That's right. I don't know now if Lambs would... If, uh, the sweepers weren't concerned on, on, on his last rock halfway down the sheet, and then all of a sudden it was on the guard, so I don't know if it picked or it just hit a curl spot. Yeah, just as much as we were concerned about it potentially hanging straight out there, it actually Curls. found some more curl than we yeah, thought. Yeah, absolutely. Big draw here for, for Team Walters. An important two points here, Mark. They're not sweeping it too hard here. So he must be pretty close. Working on it here now. It looks pretty good. No one seems overly concerned on the weight. The guys will just clean this one in. <laughs> no, and the boys, as we say, laid it on the lid. All Harold did just then was lay it out there. Lay it out the there. The sweepers it, made the shot. Yep, just lay it out there and let the sweepers make the shot. And that's a great start for Team Walters. But I think now in second end we might see uh, the land would force him to try to put a bit of pressure back on Walters and get those two points right back. Absolutely. So, Sam, you guys have the bye. Now you're with uh, Nathan Young team. Who do you guys play tonight? 
Tonight we play Dylan Hancock at uh, 7 o'clock. Okay. So if you have the opportunity, if you're around, you got nothing to do on a Tuesday night, feel free to drop down to the St. John's Perling Club to catch some good action. I know there's going to be another great game being played between Andrew Simmons and uh, Greg Smith. That'll probably be uh, certainly a feature game for sure. No, the curling should be hot here all week for people who want to drop in. Free admission. Come down, enjoy a beverage, pick up some curling tips and watch a couple of great games. That's right. From the, some, someone as veteran as Mark Noseworthy. So with the two points in the first end, uh, Mark, uh, you think, uh, what, what would you be playing here? Would you go for the tight guard and apply that pressure or keep it going? Or would you, like uh, Harold called here, rock into the top four foot? Me? I would put it in front and in what we call zone three because uh, for viewers, a lot of the curlers, they divide the hog line to the back line into zones. So from the hog line to the top of the 12 foot is divided into three zones. Zone one being closest to the hog line, zone two in the middle, and zone three is the zone closest to the 12 foot. So I would call to play it in zone three. But now Harold Walters played it in, which means he's going to let them throw up corner guard and then he's going to play a guard on it. So it's just an opposite of playing a guard. The other team throws a corner guard and coming around. So it, it's just a personal preference on how teams want to play it. And here goes Harold now, indicating he wants a guard. You know, with a rock in the forefoot in the, in the second end, Mark, it, it, Harold's basically saying, I'm okay with you hitting me out, and I'm okay with you putting up the corner guard, because if you do that, I'm just going to put up a guard of my own. Well, the thing about with the rock on the pin, Harold's rock, uh, it's not a bad call if Lambs would want to hit it, because if he doesn't hit it, throws it up a guard. For them to score, assuming Walters keeps putting the guard out front on it, at some point, Team Lambswood has to move the rock off the pin. Right. Now, if the rock was only in the 8-foot, it makes a difference. You know, you can just draw the 4-foot if you get stuck to, to get your 1. And uh, But anyway, they uh, the guard is... Uh, only partially guarding his rock in the forefoot in the button. Uh, I think Lambswood is playing a, a quiet. No, he's going to just straight draw around the corner guard, which is a good call. You know, it's interesting. I think Harold might have guarded the wrong side of that rock there. They would have liked to see it have been a rock more curl, so that if Ryan didn't wanted to, he could play the hit and roll right now. Although he's elected to play the draw. A lot of people would play the hit and roll here, but the, the, uh, you see a lot of the better teams. They won't play that because if you ever get tight and hit the guard and knock it out of play, your shot comes off and that guard goes back because we're playing the five rock rule, which means you can't hit a rock in the free guard zone, which is from the top of the 12 to the hog line till the sixth rock at the end. But right now we have this good come around by Aaron Feltham. Yeah, it's a solid shot, Mark. Yeah, in front of the tee line, probably uh, half covered or three quarters covered on the outside, and it's a nice come around. Yeah, Harold's got to be careful now because all it'll take is one real nice shot from Team McNeil Lambswood, and that rock on the pin's gone, and all that's left is a rock buried behind a corner guard. Absolutely. Guard. Absolutely. I'm agreeing 100%, Sammy. For those of you people that are listening in on this broadcast, you might hear me refer to Sam Follett sometimes as Sammy Boy, <laughs> which is my, uh, my name for him. <laughs> I appreciate the nicknames. So this rock looks to be a little heavier than they want, so uh, immediately Harold's going for the audible. Either try to get a little curl or even tap the other guard up. Just tap it up enough to, to get a little bit of a guard on it. Uh, Plan B works out. I think that's going to work for him. So, so that works out for uh, Team uh, Walters. You see the guy in the green cap on uh, Harold's team, his name's Scott Eaton, and he's a three-time under-21 provincial champion here out of Newfoundland, represented Newfoundland in uh, 2007, 2009, and 2010 at the Junior National Championship. Great junior curler, and it's great to see him uh, competing on the men's side. Yeah, we see uh, Landwood now. He's a, this is a six rock at the end. He's playing the run-back double, asking uh, Graham Weagle to make this shot. Must be close. They're sweeping it. It's a yes, no, yes, no kind of thing. Oh. And it just whiskers by the one on the uh, on the tee line and rolls for somewhat of a quasi corner guard. Well, they were sweeping it, so as, as my team would tell me, bad line call. <laughs> they should have been off it, let it come up a bit. 
Well, it's going to be a bit of a no-brainer call here for Harold again. Uh, he's going to keep protecting that rock on the tee line. See if they can get an early steal here in the second end. Yeah, and we're the, we're uh, we go roll on that on the, on the, with the shooter on that last rock. It stops that come around probably around around that long guard. Now it's a shor a much shorter tight guard to get around on that turn. Also an accessible rock in the event that Ryan has to play some type of angle angle raise even to get that rock off the button. Uh, it, Looks Absolutely. like we're going to have another plan B shot here, Merrick. Might have, it might have opened it up just a hair too much. It might be accessible on the outturn through that port. Now that port is pretty tight, but it's, uh, as some people would say, you can still drive a truck through it. <laughs> That's right. This one's a big line and weight call here, Merrick. Yeah, I don't think he's throwing a lot of weight at this. This is a, this is a back line hack type shot. If he gets through that hole and rolls behind that outside yellow one, they're, in, uh, they're sitting in pretty good shape here. Puts a lot of pressure on Walters, like you said, Sam. That one rock, that when you play play it in, and you got to keep making that guard, or you're going to get in trouble. Daniel gets on quick here early to keep the line straight. It's an on and off call from Ryan. Rock is just near the second hog line. Daniel's working it really hard to keep it by that guard. And he gets it by. Some great sweeping by Daniel Bruce. Never quite got enough of a roll, so the shot is still accessible to uh, Team Walters here now. But they're sitting the two points they want, Ryan. Or, uh, Mark, sorry. <laughs> Ryan is, Mark. <laughs> that is correct, Sam. And just another uh, game update here for you guys as viewers. In the, on sheet four, we got a game between Trent Skeynes and Dave Thomas from Port Basque. And Trent Skeynes picked up a big four points in the first end to take a 4-0 lead. On sheet five, we have Team Parker Tipple taking on Team Greg Smith. And Greg Smith picks up a two points in the first end, take a 2 nothing lead. And on sheet six, we have Team uh, Hancock taking on Team Simmons. And Team Simmons takes two points in the first end, take a 2-0 lead. And uh, Scott Eaton just ticked the guard. Now, they were working on it all the way down, so I don't know if they were hoping to bend it or if he got a little wide and... The line call wasn't quite where it should have needed to be. But uh, Lambswood has a, a shot here now to come around and try to Christmas tree the rocks a bit and lie three. And when we say Christmas tree, and what we mean is if there's multiple rocks behind a guard, the first rock you can see half of it. The rock behind that you can see half of that. And the rock behind that you can see half again. So it's a bit, a bit of a, they're lined up on an angle, but you can't hit either one of them fully which means there's no double. This looks a little hot, Mark. I don't think it's going to need any help from the sweepers. He's deep. As opposed to trying to make the initial call, they got Graham on to sweep it straight to get it past that top rock, and they do just that. Trying to make it out, that was a bit of what we call an audible. But I've just noticed now that... Uh, Aaron Feltham has not been on the ice for the last several rocks, so I don't know if we have an, an injury that came into play here or not. Not sure. We'll have to get some, uh, have to get an update on that and let uh, let everybody know. Yeah, hopefully Aaron's all right. Hopefully it's just a bathroom break, Mark. It could be. Big shot here for Scott Eaton. This one pretty hard. Going for the double takeout. If trying to get past the guard, the front he's going to be pretty close to it. Oh, they jammed it, but they got a bit of a roll in behind, apparently in behind the top, top guard. But Lambswood still has his chance here to hit and roll to the wing to lie three. I think Harold's job here for the rest of this end is try to find a way to set up some type of double takeout, and Ryan's job here is to not give him that opportunity. Well, if they hit and roll to lie three, uh, being up two, Harold can live with a two winter, but he doesn't want to give up the three spot. Absolutely. So he'll, you know, probably look at trying to make a double. Later in the game, if you probably couldn't give up a double or give up a two, you'd probably just draw around the center guard. Right. You'd try to force him to draw for one, but second end, you wouldn't do that. Indication from the weight from Graham is a little heavy. Line looks close here. Line looks real close. Now they're sweeping to get some extra curl. Scott Eaton's going to try to get this right out of the house. He's working it hard, and it does roll right out of the house. 
Okay, so Lamswood's lying too. I think the shot here now, I think uh, Walters is going to play the hit and roll. And hey Mark, you mentioned too in one of the prior shots, they rolled for that corner guard, which now actually at the as the end progressed, it actually gives Mark or uh, Harold more guards. Well, he he got three or four feet he can roll behind to be shot rock. Absolutely. So regardless, as long as Harold rolls behind, uh, Lambs was going to be playing the out turn come around that yellow guard. Yep. He's going to be behind T line no matter what. No so matter Ryan's what. He's going to be looking at a definitely a draw to the top four foot. Walters looks a little wider. Going to hang on for shot rock? Okay. <coughs> Never got the roll. Still wide open. I think you're going to see Lambs would play a hit and roll to the side here and take his two. And why he will roll to the side here, if he rolls in behind and Harold comes around the garden for shot rock, all Lambs could do then is draw for one. If he rolls to the wing, Walters, I would think 100% will hit it and uh, hit and stay and give Lambswood his his uh, hit or draw for two. So that's probably how it's going to pan out. Now we're happy to see Feltham back on the ice. Not sure where he went, but he's back, and that's the main thing. Yeah, it might have just been a serious bathroom break. As they say, an emergency bathroom break, right? Yeah, too much, too much spicy food last night. <laughs> so, big shot here from Lambswood. Trying to hit and roll to the wing. Okay, nice throw. They got Daniel on this to keep the rock straight. That is starting to curl a bit. He might be rolling behind. Now they're going for some curl. Looks like they're going to be right on the beak, Mark. No. Right on the beak, Sam. Boy, can you call him. <laughs> Almost as good as you, Mark. I don't know about that, Sam. I, I got to wear glasses at my age. <laughs> I'll get you a bifocal one day, Mark. Don't worry. So another, Harold Walters has another opportunity to get out of this end with a nice hit and roll here. He can force Lambswood to a draw for one. Just playing down weight, control, hit. I don't know if he's going to roll in. It looks like he got a long way to curl. No doubt they'll get the sweepers on this to get some extra curl. No, he's got now a roll. Going straight. That's oh. going straight. I'm going to try to hold on to it. I think we had a bad line call here, folks. It never looked like it grabbed soon. And he as soon as they got uh, Sean must be just a really good sweeper. As soon as they put Sean down to sweep, the rock took off. Well, he couldn't overcome. They had a, they got they can just draw for two, but they're looking at a, a potential split here for three. This is the rock they're looking at splitting was the one that uh, their second stone threw on a on a hit and just rolled. Uh, about six or eight inches in front of the rings. So it's worth a try. You play, if you're only playing with draw weight, even if it over curls, you tap it up, you still get your two points. But they're going to leave it. They're just going to take their draw for two yep. and get a tie game after two ends. Probably, in, in uh, you know, with my experience, I think it's probably the, the better play. Yeah, I think that's key right now. Just, just make your two sure points. you put your points on the board. Yep. Only the second end. Lots of game left here, Mark. Lots of game left. Tie game after two. It's you know, it's all fine. And the thing about it, from Lambswood's point of view, he's down two. He doesn't want to play it and only get one. Right. And he's down one. And if Walters gets two in the next end, now he's down three. Right. So you know, if you had control of the game and the game was tied and you had to hammer, that you were going to, even if you only scored one, you were going to be up. It's fine. You can play for two. 
you're coming from a position of advantage. But right now, just take your two, go into a tie game playing in, th in the third end, and and uh, they should be happy with that. Yeah, and the sweepers do a good job to get this into the 12 foot. And uh, get two <laughs> points here, a comeback two points, I should say, from McNeil Lambswood. Good sweep by the front end. Just grab the top of the 12 foot, but two points for uh, Lambswood. And uh, we have a game here, 2-2 two -two after two ends. Good on him. Keep going, Brad. So it's good solid uh, two points back from uh, McNeil Amswood and uh, here fell from back from the Stones and it uh, looks like the call is to go tight. We're going to try to get a quick force out of uh, out of Harold and come back with two support. That's definitely going to be the game plan for uh, Team McNeil Amswood. Yeah, they're just going to try to play it now, try to get a force and get the hammer back and take it from there. If they happen to steal or get an opportunity for a steal, that would be a bonus. You know, so with the you know the the call was obviously to get that rock a little tighter than a one guard. But with the one guard, do you think that Brian might look at even throwing a second guard in behind that? Well, they don't need to go all in in the third end, Team Lambswood. But now it depends where Walters, uh, where this rock ends up. If this was only in the 12 foot, I probably wouldn't throw a guard. Probably come around and try to corner freeze it, especially if it's right behind the guard. But these uh these lead rocks are so important in terms of how the end plays out. There now it's go. worth noting too that uh, shortly before this event started, they flipped all the rocks, put the handles on the other side. So we had completely new rocks probably four or so years ago, and. Um, now, because they flipped them, we're basically back to factory uh, factory uh, running bands. That's that's right, Sam. That happened, I think, last week or a couple of weeks ago. But on this la on this last rock, we should note that um, Sean Hawkwood just got by that blue guard. Now that blue guard is on the center line, and we're playing the uh, it's called the no tick rule. If the rock is on the center line, you can't hit it till the sixth rock at the end. So if if a uh, Hawkwood's rock had curled uh, like a hair more and that pushed that rock off the center line, his right. rock comes out of play and that rock right. on the on the uh, center line goes back. Totally changes the contour of the end then, hey? It would have changed the end completely. But that was a good rock there by Aaron Felton. Got a little roll underneath. Walters is going back. Not sure that rock is, is in. I'll take a look at the camera here. Uh, no, it does not appear. So we got two guards out there, and he can't hit either one of them. So he's asking uh, Sean Hawker to come around again. He got a little more ice than he had last time. Yeah, definitely. This should hang better. Because for that him. last one was pretty tight to that long guard. But there's a bit of finish here. Here it comes here now. You can see it starting to bend. Yeah, the rocks are breaking way earlier now and way harder with the new. Uh, Look at that come. Flip rock. He's going to have a good rock here. Nice shot by Aaron Felton, right on the tee line, just in front of the tee line, in the forefoot, behind the two guards. So, this is a nice curler taking a nice now just inside the edge of the eight foot, and the rocks are breaking really, they're hanging out there to almost to the hog line and then really coming hard, which is nice. Uh, most good players in Canada would say that's pretty nice, that's a pretty nice curl. Definitely. 
But this one looks like it's even a little wider. It's got a long way to come. But now I think the biggest factor here is he's a little bit heavy. And he goes a uh, wiggle, slips to the back. So, folks, we got a new person joining the booth here today. Um, we're going to have a skip of Team Young, Nathan Young, join the booth for us just for a little bit. Glad you could come aboard there, Nathan. Got a few words of wisdom in. Hey, folks. No, there's no way I can top you and, uh, you and Sam there, Mark. So uh, I, just, uh, I think you can hold your own there. Trying Nathan. to live up to the... To your, to your very quality production here. Well, so. the biggest difference in you and Sam, you don't have you don't have a nickname like Sammy Boy. <laughs> we just call you Nathan. <laughs> I'm fine with that. And not a bad shot by uh, Evan Curley here, but it might be accessible to a double for Team Lambswood. But uh, Lambswood got to be careful here. Looks like he's going to make a play on his own blue one. And the indication is PO8. I don't know if I like that. I, I always like keeping rocks in the rings. Tends to put a lot more pressure on the opposition. That blue rock is in really kind of a nice place for the McNeil Lambswood if they ever needed to use down the road down later in the year. Absolutely. This happens to hang a bit, and you catch a thin, and uh, Ian Walters draws an, uh, an, an intern draw, the yellow one right on the tee line. You're going to have to peel that top yep. guard, which yep. you could do now. They're working on it. They're going to be close by the looks of it. A little bit thin. That's a good shot, especially if it hangs in the, in the back of the 12 foot. That's a good shot. So he got two. Landwood has uh, second and third shot, but Walters is going to draw around again. Lie one, two, hopefully, behind that long guard. Yeah, it is a long guard, which means uh, him and Neil Landswood will be able to access it. However, it'll likely take two rocks to get at the one on the forefoot. So if you're Team Walters with a hammer here, you, you're looking at a opportunity to score. Two, if you can place these rocks. Yeah, just, just going to give a, an update here now on sheet four. Uh, Trent Gaines stole two more in the second end to go up six nothing on Dave Thomas. Uh, Young Tipple scored one in the second end, and Greg Smith leads, <coughs> excuse me, two to one after two. And Trent Gaines, I believe, uh, no, uh, Simmons stole one in the second to go up three nothing on. Uh, and Team Hancock. And just a quick comment on sheet five, <laughs> Tipple versus Smith. Uh, Parker made an outturn angle raise from about a two guard zone to score one. It was a great shot, angle raise double. I think Nathan and curling terms, we call that a pistol. Pistol, absolutely, yeah. So great shot there from uh, Team Walters to stagger two of their stones, top four foot and the top eight foot. And like we predicted, off comes the guard here. That's a good shot by uh, Team Walters. Get behind that guard. But now, big run back here, and it's a fairly long guard, so not an easy shot. Really jumping on him. Yeah, I, I think they left that a little bit too long. So Walters is, he should play the guard on this. Yeah, guard for your life here now. He has to hammer, but if he can keep guarding it, well, he's not going to leave much to uh, Team Lambswood. No, keep this guard. You don't want this guard guard to come too deep. Uh, we'll make the run back a little easier. Probably just a halfway guard. Yeah, you gotta guard. You gotta guard to rock this second shot. Because he really has nothing on the shot rock. Right. So as long as he guards the top one, he should be okay. And he doesn't need to be too deep. He can be a couple of feet in front of the rings easily and still be a uh, still be fine. Right. Line seems to be a little bit tight on this. Yeah, it's going to curl down to the end here. There's really kind of this looks really heavy as well. This is not what they call here 
Uh, okay. I'll come there. There's indications, Mark, that they might have been calling a shot in the house. Instead it, of the guard. it might have been. I, I think he would have been better off just playing the guard. Yeah, but, uh, I agree. Interesting outcome. Spread the rocks around. I think there could possibly be a uh, ripple almost here now if you uh, get it right, but make contact with three of them. I think the main thing is they just get those two in the middle out of there. Mm. I think they'll be pretty happy because they'll still have, if they make that double, they're still going to have three blue rocks right. in the rings. Right. So just a shade high here, make the double, and I think they'll end up lying one, three, and four. So it's a big shot here. And you know it's going to curl at the end. They might have lost it. Nope. Ah, oh, just, just got the one. So I think Walters is back to line two again here now. And with probably not a much of a double opportunity on either one of them. Interesting situation for Walters here. I think, if it was me, I think he just draws to the open side. And lie three. <laughs> Try to minimize the double opportunity. What do you think, Nathan? Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I mean, my my mind went to first trying to guard this situation here, but it's hard to guard it without leaving a, either a little bit of the yellow open or a little bit of the blue yeah. one open. Draw the lie three, and if he gets some, enough separation that there's no double, yeah. uh, puts a bit of pressure back on Lambswood. And I'll, yeah. you got to remember now they're down to the... Uh, yeah. This is, uh, they're going to be down to Skip's Rocks after this shot. What about the choice of side here, Mark? Do you like this side, or would you think about the other side? I got I got no problem with this side. you got to go out to the edge of the 8-foot, though. Just thinking the separation yeah, I know. will be I less know here on the... F like, you know... But they got to... If you can get it... Uh, that looks like a great shot. I mean... You might be able to make the double on him, but you're bringing in, yeah. ticking your guard also at the same time. Yeah. And if you hit that top yellow, you could jam it right on the other yellow at the same time, yeah. which jams on the blue. Yeah. And you could roll underneath. So there's lots that can go wrong here. At the same time, you could make, you know, you could make a nice double and, yeah. you know, and still give Harold a chance to lie too, yeah. but you're not giving up a three or four under. This is why I wonder if it would have been, when you have a 50 50, you know, draw to the right side, draw to the left side. I think if Team Walters drew to the opposite side, they could have had a little bit more separation between the rock they threw and the rock on the forefoot. And they're not going to play the, the wide double anyway. Right. Would not be the right cause. And you're forcing Lambswood to still come back on that rock in the forefoot, either right. raise his own or play the out turn tap back. Right. Which means he rolls into the open, and Walters still has a chance to lie three. Right. Similar situation, but maybe a little bit... Better for Walters, but oh, so now we have uh, the broom down. Ryan is looking to play this side double. I think if they can that get triple, past that, that triple, might be there. Yeah. Quarter rock, maybe a little less than quarter. You might be able to squeeze three of them out. Could be possible. You might lose your shooter. You might lose. Well, I think if he hits quarter rock or a little less than quarter, his shooter might go underneath yeah. or on the back half of the rock that was just thrown. So that's rolling out. The one on the side goes out, and I think he hits the back. End of the rock, right at the back of the eight foot, misses the, the jam and over, over the top of the blue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's coming with what we call coming with the heat here. We're on it early here. He's tight. See if they can back it up. They're sweeping it well, and they get it by the top one. But will he hit the? Okay. Okay, hit the top one. Now, now I think Harold goes back to the same side, and he got a bit more room to play with here now. Certainly. Higher the better here, because you don't want to leave a tr another triple, triple opportunity. Well, this is a situation where Harold gets in the hack and tells his front end to drop it on the T-line. Right. And it shouldn't be a problem. The T-line's 12 feet wide. <laughs> you don't talk about it that it's only a quarter inch thick, but it's 12 feet wide. Anybody can put it on the T-line. <laughs> it's all perception, Nathan. Yeah. It's all perception. It's how, yeah. you, it's how you teach juniors how to drop it on the T-line. Jeez, anybody can do it. It's 12 feet wide. <laughs> so I guess two po real possible shots here. Uh, you can split the house, play the shot they just played, and slide three. But they could uh, also guard that one on the forefoot. I'm thinking if they guarded that one, McNeil Lambs would just rip the back one and you draw for two. Possibly. But I'd say the shot here is, is 
just put this on the tee line out out on the edge of the uh, eight foot or even into the twelve foot. Yeah, which is where this is going to end up based on the line now. Neil Lambs will go for the double. If they make it, you get two, and if they miss, you might get three. And well, if, you know, three three in the third end after a tie game is a big is a big end. Uh, right. Did they oversweep this? Slide in pretty good. Okay. Nesting it here at the end. Stops in time. <laughs> so I don't know if that trip might still be there. Depends on where you hit. I think the dead stick. The double is there for sure. For sure. And the safest double is the one, the rock in the middle, and the one he just threw. You play the other double, there's always a potential jam on that back blue rock. Right. Certainly, you, if you make that double on the left-hand side as we look at it, that yellow one is going to make contact with the yellow one on the right here on the screen. And, uh, it's difficult to know if it's going to uh, jam or if it's going to hit it and be able to roll out as well. But. Well, I, I would think they're talking about which double is easier. Right now, he's looking at giving up three, so he can live with giving up a deuce. He's trying to minimize or not give up three to go down three. So you got to look at, you know, if you get caught sometimes, giving up two as opposed to three is a big deal. So just try to make a double. Now, you could also just play a good hit and roll, too. It serves the same purpose. The hit and roll is precise shot, and it, it's such a precise outcome that it requires in order to really put pressure on Walters. I wonder if the double is... Might be easier. Yeah. The double is basically just a line call. Right. You're not looking to keep your shooter because you won't be shot anyways. Yeah. Seems like they are going to go with that hit and roll, though. Well, with that, with that, well, that ice is probably not far off that thin double. But I think the other double is a little flatter. Agreed. Which makes it a little easier to play, or at least line call, anyway. Agreed. This is certainly... Uh, with you know, this this, he's, playing the, he's playing the role with this weight. Sweepers on this right out of the hand. I thought, they were I thought they were rolling to the left-hand side here when you're looking at the rings, but he's just going to... Uh, no, over curl on him, and Walters has a straight takeout for three. Huge shot here for Harold Walters. With the ice is taking, he's throwing control weight here. Well, maybe even less than that, board weight, based on how Lambswood just came. He's not, uh, he's, this is just a firm hack. He'll be disappointed if he doesn't get to three here. This is as simple as a three and here comes. Straight takeout. Open takeout, yeah. Still requires an equal amount of focus. You hate to let these ones get away from you. Well, I was told a long time ago, Nathan, you want to win a lot of curling games, you got to make your free points. Yeah. Free draws and free right. open hits. You right. make all them, you're going to right. win a lot of curling right. games. Now this Who's is starting to curl on Really Walters. curling here. And they this. hold it. Over the top of the back one. Oh. And a big turnaround here. A hit for three turns into a steal of one. I mean, if you I think, think about it, a full four point swing. That's a is, big, is what big we swing. Just, yeah. Unforced error there. So for I think his weight was a little down. He probably only had. At best, hack weight, maybe not even hack weight. So I think he underthrew it a bit and it just took off on him. Right. Well, they'll, they'll be disappointed with that. However, in the grand scheme of things, they're only down one with, the hammer. Down one with hammer. It's not the end of the game. Not the end of the game. So, and again, we don't know how it's going to pan out, but in a lot of games, uh, you only get so many opportunities for a big end, and three would be a big end. So you don't know if there's going to be another crack at, tr at three right. in this right. game. Right. For Team Walters, that might have been their only three, right. which means you're going to have to win the game with uh, singles and deuces. Right. Got to give a little score update here. So the score now after three ends here is 3-2 for Lambswood over Team Walters. And the only other update we have now is on ice six. Uh, Simmons is up three to one after three on Team Hancock, who scored one in the third end. 
Well, we'll s we've seen this uh, set up before here on the feature game. Center guard goes up from Team L McNeil Lambswood, and then we see the corner guard from Team Walters. I believe the first ten start is similar to this. Very similar. And for people that are viewing this game, we are uh, streaming two games from the Newfoundland Tanker here at the St. John's Curling Club. We are streaming the game we're showing on this channel, which is uh, Team Lambswood and Team Walters. And also on H4, the Team Dave Thomas and Team Skeins are being uh, broadcast with the team of uh, broadcasters Sporty Bragg and Glenn Goss. So tune into either either one of those games and uh, watch some great curling, folks. We're getting a split time hog to hog on this draw from Aaron here to get an idea of the speed. Sweepers on this one for line. He did a good job to hold this one. Well, I got a 15-4 hog to hog on this with pretty heavy sweeping. Yeah, it's pretty quick, Nathan. That's, yeah. that's a pretty good speed. Yeah. For our viewers, that speed, uh, the curlers turn the rocks from hog to hog, and then you train throwing certain weights. So that's considered fairly quick. And the thing when the ice is fast, uh, you just got to give it a chance because your sweepers can bring it an awful long way. And rocks tend to carry a lot when the ice is really, really fast. You can bring them even an extra couple of feet. So the thing about it, you just can't. Pump them too hard. You just got to let them Doesn't fall out of your much. hand, and yeah. you're going to make a lot of draws. Yeah. We have Evan on trying to get a bit more curl out of this rock. Starting to break pretty hard here now, but I still, I'm still i not sure he's going to be much behind the guard. So, for reference, folks, this one was a 15 1. As you can see, it came very similar, very similar depth to the 15 4 we saw on the starting line, maybe a little less sweeping on. No, you're digging those right. Yeah, what a lot of teams do, folks, uh, when they're timing, is they have two people time, and they'll take the aggregate between the two, the median, uh, because it's so precise when somebody lets it go at the hog line and try to get it exactly when it crosses the far hog line. So if somebody has 15 seconds, and the other guy in the front end has 15.2, they'll say it's 15.1. But this rock didn't quite get buried, so we'll see Team McNeil Lambswood try to just bump it out with some board weight. On and off it so far. Looks close. It'd be nice to roll behind the center line guard here, too. It would be. Go on the roll here. Oh, what a, a great shot. Uh, that's a nice roll. Nice roll. Time to clean so, up the front here, I think. So early in this end, Lance will got some pressure going. Already got some pressure applied here to Team Walters. And you can see this is a good example of why the team without hammer would want to clutter up the middle because they've done a good job this end, and now they are forcing Team Walters to deal with it instead of putting rocks in the house. Absolutely. And, you know, normally when you're trying to score a lot of points, you try to get separation in your rocks, but now, like Nathan just said, uh, they got to come back to the middle. And that's a pretty good pretty shot. Good got shot rid there. of one of the rocks in the forefoot, got the guard off, and roll for a corner guard. So now... Team Lambs, but they got to make sure they get the guard on because if the open half rock is exposed on either turner, it gives Team Walters a chance to hit and roll behind a corner guard. So getting this guard properly placed is a huge thing and a big deal here to keep uh, Walters away from the corners. A few um, end updates, folks, since we updated Sheet 6. Uh, on Sheet 4, Skeins versus Thomas. It looks like Thomas scored uh, 1 in the third end. The score there is 6-1 to one for Skeins going into the fourth. Skeins with hammer. On the fifth, on ice number 5, Tibble versus Smith. Uh, it appears that Smith scored three in the third end to take a five to one lead. Tipple with hammer in the fourth. Okay. 
not from Dreyfus. Certainly requires some precise guards here. Wouldn't take a, much of an overcurl to give Team Walters an opportunity to hit well, and roll. Well, if they can get an opportunity to get over and get a hit and roll behind those two corner guards, right. it would be uh, brings the deuce back into play. But Lamb was just trying to play the guard here again. This one appears to be a little bit tight, trying to hold it early. Yeah, I think, if anything, is going to be so much uh, proud of that yellow, blue rock in the forefront is going to be exposed. This is going to overcurl somewhat. You're trying to keep a rock straight. Sometimes if you sweep it early, you can really affect the angle uh, uh, that the rock is moving relative to the other end. This, looks, this rock looks like, as Nathan looks like, it's probably a little two-thirds open. Two-thirds for sure, yeah. So the, the, the uh, ability for Team Walters to play a, play a nice hit and roll here now with some down weight, a board weight hit maybe, or a control weight hit. Mm. Looks like a close throw. Seems to be curling early. Could be close on this one. No, that's going to have to curl a bit more. Beautiful weight. Watching the roll here. Not a bad shot. I think he just rolled a hair too far, but still not a bad shot. Great attempt. Even if, if uh, Lambert goes after it, I'm thinking Walters is coming around that center guard again. Sure. So it, that roll changes to how they're going to play out the end. No, Lambert looks like he's going to ignore it. McNeil Lambswood playing this out. If I do this, they'll do this. He's yep. thinking if I hit that open, if I hit the yellow one open on the side, regardless of if I stay or not, Team Walters is definitely drawing around one of their corner guards. And so getting ahead of that, he's saying, well, that's... In order to get ahead of that, I'm going to draw around. It's, the right, it's absolutely the right call, Nathan, is to come around again. Because uh, what you just said, uh, that's exactly the way it would, uh, well, that's the way it would pan out when, if you were playing me or right. I was playing you. Right. Because we, we would understand that. Right. And Certainly these guys they, obviously, obviously understand it. And so Lambs was just trying to get back around first before Walters has the opportunity. Which, if I'm being honest, Walters isn't so uh, disappointed with this play either. He has a rock in the house now. Absolutely. You know? Very interesting situation. And the guard's long enough, and there's enough curl there that if you bring it into the forefoot or the T line, there's enough room to get around and push it out. Right. I wouldn't get off this one now. Well, that's, that's a nice come around. It leaves it high in the rings, so there's not, not as much opportunity to get around and get it out. Walters is, going, is elected to play the hit. He's got to be careful. Wonders, it looks like there might be a. A, a tempting amount of room to come down with an intern back line hack weight shot, even just to bump that blue one in the open and roll behind your corner guards well, on that, the right. That would not a bad call either, but I'm not, you know, this is not uh, the worst call in the world. Again, it depends on how you, you know, on how you're feeling about it. Oh. Close. Oh, bit of a bad break there for Scott Eaton. He uh, nutted it and kept it as the Lambswood Rock is shot rock, albeit not behind the guard, but it is wide open. But it gives Lambswood another opportunity to get around that long guard now and lie one two. Where that rock did roll to, it <laughs> kind of cuts off the, the corner guards on the right-hand side for Team Walters. However, where it is open, if you can see Team you know, Lambs would draw one into the center, Harold might be able to play some kind of in-off. Well, the thing about coming around, they got to make sure they're in around. Like That's too high. The double is... Well, I think you're on a skip track, so I think you come into the forefoot here now, For top sure. of the forefoot. Agreed. The thing about it, if you're top of the forefoot, you're going to leave, leave Harold a double off that blue rock. Yep. Right, so this is about where you got to place it now. If it comes into the T line, that double off that outside blue one is fairly thin. Uh, yes, but then you leave a little draw. So if you half. so if you play the double and he goes over the top, <laughs> Landry comes around and line two fully in the four foot close right. on the pin. So you might see Harold if this one is on the T line, just play a little freeze. It's not the end of the world if this come around is full twelve foot, right. as long as he's one two. Because there's still no double. 
Harold would probably have to play the hit and roll off and make the roll perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So there's options here for Lambs, but this is about not leaving that double off that outside right. one that's open. Right. As long as that's the case, you should be able to keep Team Walters to one. Yes. Even if he's a little deeper, Walters freezes, but then he freezes on top again. You're back to one point again. Right. Yes. You can see uh, probably not a bad uh, example of the thought process going on in the skip's head at every yep. point in time of the game, right? This, this one looks a little light. Looks a little short. They're working hard just to get a just to get it in. Haven't got to go far to get shot to get second shots. No, nope. a little short. They worked hard to just to hard sweep there by the boys on the front end, Daniel Bruce and Aaron Felton, just to get that in. Harold now looking to play the hit and roll to the center line. Well, a hit and roll here to the center line really puts a bit of pressure back on Lampswood again. Might force them to play an intern, an intern draw. Might if, if he rolls behind that blue one, that's what he's going to force him to do. Because that's the only way he's going to get out of it. Exactly. But now if he only rolls a foot and a half, and he's sort of still behind that yellow one primarily. Primarily, they might be able to play on their own blue one and. And, right. and get a bit Run of a bump back. and get shot rocked that way. And even if he rolls here and is half open on the other side, the sheet is not the end of the world. This looks like it got a long way to curl. wonder where they got a little thin tick here. No. Nope. Oh. Opportunity loss here for Harold Walters. <laughs> it looked like a nice throw, maybe just a little bit heavy weight. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of weight to me for playing a, a hit and roll. I got a nine and a half, which is close to a normal weight. So they're playing that intern draw now. Going to ignore that one in the back. They could play down to that back one and just lie two. Be good force. And force him on, force Harold to one. And get the hammer because they haven't had the hammer in the tie game yet. But this, I would call this a steal opportunity. Yeah, to go up by two after the fourth end isn't so bad. I think they're they're weighing the risk reward here. The risk is you don't make this, and Team Walter scores two, and you're only down one. Well, I think if the game was tied, they hit they go on the open one and lie two. But being up one, uh, right. They make a nice draw here. Even if they give up two, they're still only down one. They got the hammer back. Right. So, right. like you said, it's all about risk and reward. And uh, this is the shot that I I like personally, and I think you like this one also. I do. Yeah. Especially given it's only the fourth end. I mean, hammer and and one point is almost worth uh, the same amount. Absolutely. At this time, at this point of the game. Well, again, you got to look at the scoreboard. If there's a tie game, I think the shot could be different. But in a game where you're one up without playing the fourth and you got a chance to really squeeze the other guy, right. they might get one anyway. But now right. this is starting to curl harder, Nathan. It's going to be really close it's to the... be tight to get by the guard. Even the blue one in the house. Ooh, just heard it. So Walters is going to have a hit for two again. We're seeing this uh, across the sheets. Uh, seems to be very really sensitive. Some of the stones are really jumping, um, and that one actually was a little heavy. Even it was a little bit. I'm thinking he kicked off a little heavy, perhaps tried to take a bit off, and in the process got a little bit soft on the release, which made it cool. Well, uh, Sam and I talked about it a little earlier in the broadcast, Nathan, that the rocks were just sharpened right. last week. So it's right. like you're dealing with rocks at the start of the season. And there's a lot of a lot of curl to him at the end. They're coming hard, and I agree with what you just said. He looked like he was had loads of room, and then he just got by the top one and ticked right. his own blue one. Right. Now Harold here got a lot of weight here, but now it should come up at the end. Sweepers backing off. Nope. Hit for two. So two for Walters in the fourth end to go up four to three. Great takeout. And we have a pretty close game going here, folks. 9.5 split on that one, hog to hog, which again is normal weight. Seems to be a very comfortable weight for Harold. Yeah, Harold is not a generally not, not a big weight thrower. There are certain teams, certain players that tend to like it uh, hard all the time. 
which isn't always an advantage. But uh, here we are. And I think uh, four games going on. I think we're uh, we're just slightly ahead of the other three games, who are still just finishing off their fourth ends. So when that happens, we'll give another uh, update on all the games to the people that are watching online. So we'll finally have a one-point lead here in the fifth end. Team Walters uh, would love to force this end. Take a tied game, hammer into the sixth after the break. Absolutely. If you can tell me before every game started that I can be tied with the hammer after five, I'll probably take it 100% of the time. <laughs> because it's no different, like I'm a big football fan, everything happens in the second half. Same in curling. Right. And there's a lot of Like what they say at the Masters at golf. The Masters doesn't start until... Sunday. Okay, back nine on Sunday. Yep, absolutely. It's four to three, and, but the, and that's with Walters missing a, a hit for three in the third. So, you know, after four inch, you got to think that Walters has had the, the better chances in this game. Absolutely. And they've had uh, Team Lambs was back on their heels a little bit. But again, in curling, that can change in a heartbeat. This Lambs team are young and hungry, and they're all high-quality players. And they all come in with a lot of junior experience. Well, I can speak from experience. I've lost a lot of games to this team here. Uh, very solid team, very strong team. And uh, talked about big weight hitters they're certainly strong there as well so well my experience playing team lambs what I, f I find those guys if you get down against them hard hard, hard, to, hard to get hit back at hitting I, ability. I think they they play better when they're ahead or tied with the hammer than they do when they're down and there's other teams that are the exact opposite of that well they we don't hold the lead very well but when they're down they really know how to grind it out right and you got rocks everywhere and there's all sorts of danger around every shot right well, look at the style play here we see team Team Walters really not afraid of the lower lower weight shots. We have two center line guards coming up to start this end. You know? Well, I'm thinking Team Walters talked about this before the game, knowing full well that Team Lambswood are a, a, you know, a high caliber, high quality team. Right. And so they probably said, so what do we need to do right. to win this game? Right. And they're, you know, they realized they're not going to go up and down the sheet with these guys. Right. And not that you won't win, but the chances are probably against it. Right. So they probably figured, well, we're going to have to get rocks in play. Right. And so far through four ends, that's been what they, that's been what they've done, and they've had a number of opportunities here. Yeah. And they've got two deuces on the board. The best way to increase the likelihood of your opposition missing a shot is to increase the difficulty of their shots. Absolutely. Which often involves more rocks in play. This looks like a good come around by Aaron Feltham here, though. Into the eight foot. Aaron's a great lead. Very, positions his stones very well. Played with Aaron last year in the juniors, and uh, he was a phenomenal part of our team and really set us up well every end. No, he's a good player. I don't know the uh, second stone that well, uh, Weagle, but all the Daniel Bruce and. Uh, Aaron Feltham and Ryan Lambswood are all top quality players, all young players, all got a good future. Yeah, Graham is a experienced player from Nova Scotia. Uh, you guys may have already gone over this earlier in the broadcast as well, but a national under-18 champion from 2018 as, as Skip from Nova Scotia. So okay, now that I did not remember. A lot of experience, not know. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Lambswood and those guys played Graham in 2020 in Langley in the juniors. I think he was there that year also. Because that year, uh, Ryan Lambswood and Daniel Bruce lost the national under-21 final to uh, Team Manitoba. And I think Sam and I talked about it earlier during the broadcast. So we have a number of you know good quality players here in Newfoundland. We have, again, this year we have... In Dustin Air Club, we have three good junior teams who I believe all three are playing in the Tankard. And we got a couple of younger ones that are under 18 teams that are up and coming that have, have improved quite a bit. Right. No, it's a very strong ecosystem here uh, from our club and uh, very, very good performers on the national stage over the past number of years as well. Newfoundland has very consistently had the extra team. 
uh, the second team at national events. And we have two junior girls teams at the nationals this year because of uh, Mackenzie Mitchell's performance last year. Across the board. So it's Across not the just board. the junior boys. We have some really quality Absolutely. junior girl players. Yeah. Great and, run. Uh, great one. Uh, the McKenzie's team went on last year, just uh, uh, making it all the way to the junior final as well. I mean, it's uh, where everywhere you look, Newfoundland is right in the mix. And just as a side note, uh, Mackenzie Mitchell and Sarah Chater, who was on that team, just lost Sunday morning in the Nova Scotia ladies in the semifinal game. And uh, I'm thinking a lot of players up in Nova Scotia are thinking, who is this Mackenzie Mitchell? And she goes all the way to the semifinal. So <laughs> I think you know who she is now. But that goes to the quality of the players themselves. Anyway, back to this game now. It looks like a... Oh, just a tick there. But look at this. They're oh. still going to get curl and freeze the back one. Not a bad result there. Shot rock frozen to the back Jeez, one. Very nice. But, Mark, what a game curling is. You go around this country, you meet great people, and now you can move to Nova Scotia or whatever province you want, like McKenzie did, and you have a team there. Well, once once you're known as a good player, you can get good players anywhere. So, and, you know, a person could come here and say, well, there's not a lot of good players in Newfoundland. There might be not a lot, but a lot of the players that we got are good. Very good, yeah. And, and they come with experience and talent. And you go to some places out west, they got... Uh, there's just where there's more people that play in a bigger population base. You just have more people to pick from. That's all. Right. But this uh, one hang the in caliber is pretty good here also. We're getting a nice curl here now. Sweeper is navigating this right to the back yellow one. Very well done. And and not to miss the point, uh, Nathan, but uh, now I might be slightly biased, but I think the top team in the planet is from St. John's. So maybe perhaps a slight bias. Not, there, may, uh, maybe a slight bias, but, you know. There's certainly a lot to back it up. But uh, <laughs> the record backs it up for sure. Well, certainly, uh, I guess I can't speak for everybody in the club right now, but I almost can. I, I think we all feel the, the same yeah. way. But here, this end is shaping up, though, Nathan, quickly to be uh, a lot of rocks in play. Yeah, we had one rock go behind the tee line, and as you can see, the well, pile... Well, there's nothing through the wings yet. Begins. This is the ninth rock at the end. So it tells you how this end is going to pan out. Now, this is starting to curl hard. If you can get this up by that top blue one, and it is... Oh! Another just a tick. Oh. Oh, it just went by. Oh, okay. Wow. Just tick advantage, advantage flies right back just wow. like that in a hurry. The lambs would here. Wow. Just imagine that shot. So you wouldn't even drop a hole there. Oh, Holy moly. Well, when you're looking at it from the other end, there is no hole. No. <laughs> and the rocks are only four feet apart. But he went through the hole, folks. So that, that tells you the kind of curl you're dealing with down in that right. in that spot. Right. Rotation is important. As the rock, the rock will curl more towards the end of its path regardless. However, if you don't have a lot of rotation, it will have even less by the time it gets to the other end of the ice and it just takes us... Very uh, dramatic. When the rock curl. goes flat, it just goes sideways. Right. Yeah. Now, this is starting to curl on him, too. Hard. Looks like a little bit more He's going to, going to get by the top one, but I don't think there's any chance he's getting by that second one. No, he's going to tick and roll open a bit. And he just rolled enough. Interesting. Yeah, outturn draws. There are even still. I think, well, right now looking at it, I think if you can hit that rock that Bruce just threw and get a little inside of it, you clip the back one going back, you get, so you double out two blues, you still have four rocks in the rings. That one on the edge, back edge of the forefoot is going to be wide open now if you can roll inside a bit. And Lancelot's got to be really careful. I think that's the best shot that Harold has to play here. Yeah. Well, either side of the ice, is it doesn't look great for Team Walters now, so they need to create a path for themselves to get in. Well, you got to have a way to, to, to salvage an end if you get in trouble. We had the note here, too, and McNeil Lamswood does have hammer. <laughs> that's true. 
time to get some yellow rocks in positions that are blocking McNeil Lambswood or that can be used from, by Team Walters. Right now, well, there are none. Well, if you place on this yellow, uh, the blue rock that's sort of what, just wide open with the curl, he doesn't have to play a ton of weight. He can play board weight, clip the back one going by so it takes the freeze off right. and roll in. Right. So uh, blue, even blue might point. still be 1-2. But the situation is a lot different, right. and it's a lot better for Team Walters. They may even be able to come in off and bump their blue one on the center line. A little bit like over. A little bit over, yeah. Might, yeah. That's quite possible because they're side, well, not side by side, but there's only a foot and a half between them. How high that guard is, I think they can with just heavy hack. And if it, Well, if he, if, he, if he plays heavy hack, even if he doesn't clip the back one, but he rolls in and pushes that other blue one in the open, his rock will be behind the yellow guards and could be second All shot. All blues will be exposed. All blues will be exposed. Now, not a lot of weight here. You have to go on this one. We're going to have to go to get by the top one. Starting to curl there now. Could be interesting if get, to get by the top yellow. Oh. Wow. It's, they just ticked it, but it's... <laughs> Looks like he was just playing the straight draw here. Interesting. I mean, they did just tick the high guard, but they feathered it so little that it continued to go in a straight path. And actually, he, he, when he hit the blue rock, he got inside of it a hair. Actually, a great shot. But now the guard here and the Walters is going to be in trouble. Because it looks to me like blue is lying, excuse me, blue is lying three here. So throwing the guard here now, it would be nice to bury a piece of this rock even behind the guard that's there just to prevent any kind of run back. Well, the guard here puts a lot of pressure on Team Walters. They're down to skip rocks. They don't have the hammer. Hopefully this one stops for them. Just overcurled a little bit too much. Doesn't really change the situation for Team Walters. Well, I can't, I can't, from my vantage point, I really can't get an angle on where that is. Okay, so it's overcurled. Uh, over -curled. So Team Walters comes down here now and is able to bump the yellow one through those blues into the button area. Well, he could come off. He got a couple of options. Come off one and get in for second. He could hit it a little thin. He can come off that one, push the blue out in the open, and stay in the top of the forefoot, which probably makes it hard to get out because he just, uh, Lambs would have no angle on it. Right. So he's probably looking at trying to hit a half a rock. Because if he only got T line weight, his shooter's not going to roll too far. I almost like coming off the blue one, if you can push it off the blue one, because then that blue one is pushed back a couple of feet, which means it's not as uh, advantageous for our, uh, Team Lambswood. Harold now throwing a bit of weight in this. It looks very close. They have the to sweepers need to get on it. Curl. They got to sweep this. On it no, now. No. Here are curls. He, Can they get it past? No. You got to get it. That curl has really got pronounced on that outturn. He never had bad weight. If he could hit half rock, he would have had a honey. Yeah, that was very just nice lost weight. it on the curl. I think so, got, they got to play a guard here now. Another guard. Because Harold, Harold's going to have nothing on the intern now. That's right. All he's going to have is that some kind of raise on that yellow one. Or perhaps an in off the one he just threw where it rolled to the Maybe. side. There's also an interesting, like there might be a run back on the yellow one in the three guard zone. I mean, they could play board weight and nose that. You good? Not sure what that would do though, because I think they would still be, Third. McNeil Lambs would still be shot, yeah. yeah. But you might be able to angle it and come off the one on the left yeah. hand side and, and that would flip be, in. That would be easier because you wouldn't, you'd have to hit it thinner. Yeah. 
There will be some options for Team Walters, however, none of them will be easy, especially if Team McNeil Lambs can place this guard. Look at where the ice, they really took the ice out here, almost all the way to the boards. Well, there's not a rock through the rings yet. Every rock is in play. Wow. <laughs> That's right. But you also got to make sure you have an opportunity to pick up one stone. 13 rocks thrown, 13 rocks in play. This is the 14th rock of the end here. Now, this line looks a bit wide but all the curl it curls her from the hog line in here so this is coming over here now really nice and he's going to have a nice shot here so nathan what do you think harold's best option is here I'm seeing him play on that middle yellow one. That's probably going to be his best option. If you hit it just a hair high, miss your own yellow, you could double off those top two yellow ones. Now, you might only be lying second shot. But top then, two blue ones. But then uh, Lamb Dude is not going to have an easy shot for two. Right. It's a bit of an angle change there. Right. But we can see the stones from the overhead view. Yeah. So we can see what we're talking about here is hitting that yellow one on the center line in the guard zone, straight backward, a little bit to the left, to double hit, out the blues, double out the two blues, and you might even get a bit of roll, and roll in, in for shot, roll in further to the button. But it doesn't seem like they're doing that, Mark. Well, I don't know what he's playing here. Because it looks to me like they're lying three. Excellent question. Tell us why. I don't know what the shot. No. Nope. Unless he unless he feels he can play the same shot again with the amount of curl, get by the blue one, and have a curl and hit the yellow one, and push it in for shot rock. Take the yellow I, guard and roll. I mean, I the rock they want to hit is <laughs> that is almost a the better part of a foot. Right behind that guard, over to the left. Yeah. So you got to pace that blue guard. It got to curl a foot over a foot to hit half a rock. Maybe possible if you throw draw weight, but that's not going to be enough to hit it to the button. Well, I'm not sure what they're doing here. They're coming in off their yellow guard. This one has that's got to curl a ton. Geez, I almost go straight on it here to angle it in, but no, not even no, nothing. Close. Oh, what do, what do we know? <laughs> I don't know if that was the shot or not. Certainly, uh, I, I think back in the day, Nathan, that's what we would call a, a tickety boo shot. <laughs> well, that's what you get when there's 15 rocks in oh, play. That's though. what you get when there's 15 rocks. Tickety boo play. everywhere. Yeah, I don't know if they're shot rock, wow. but even now, how's Lambs would get? Well. Lamb, and you know, Lambsford has an interesting shot now. If they play the nose hit on that yellow card, they can hit the yellow. They they could end up giving up one. They could. Up one then. They could. I wonder if um, now he might be playing here to come by and go yellow on the blue to get two. So just to see this here, to see who might be shot rock, it does appear that blue is shot rock in the back and yellow is second shot. We're, we're being made fun of in the background for our production here, Mark. I don't know what we just did. Well, I think if the production were any good, we'd have magic markers to draw little <laughs> diagrams. We, we're pointing at the screen here. You, the viewers can't see, but uh, we're having a grand time. Neil Lambswood now, final stone here in the fifth end. Trying to hit the yellow onto the blue into the button for two. Is he trying to tick a debut also? Also, oh, this oh. one close. No, he might have pushed it in for shot. Did he push it in for oh. shot? God. We'll find out. Or take oh, no, Lance no. would tap for one. I don't know. It appears to be the back blue, but it is close. Ah, oh, no. there's the signal. All that for one point. Sixteen rocks in play. Rock. Wow. Yeah, and they only scored one. <laughs> Great end.
Yeah, uh, what a very interesting end. So, folks, Team Lambwood and Team Walters, after five ends, which is the halfway point, the score all tied up, four apiece. And to go across the board now, um, a six is uh, got five ends in, and the score is eight to two for Simmons over. Um, what? Just go to the fifth end break. Where's the score here? We sh can we have that up? What we? No.
And uh, welcome back to the sixth end of game one here at the Point and Tanker. We have a great game going on, 4-4. Four four. Uh, Harold Walters will take the hammer into the second half of the game. That's right, Sammy, and here we go again. Welcome you back to the broadcast booth. Yeah, good to be People back. Good to be where back. Hell, Nathan went. And we're <laughs> back with Sammy Boy. And here we are. First rock by Aaron Feltham. Thing about being at the Scotties and the and the Tankards, provincial Tankards, you always see a lot of of your better players dropping in to watch some curling. And so I just I just noticed uh, Kathy Rogers, our 2022 Senior Ladies Champion, just came in. And she's there <laughs> watching. So it's always good to see these high-quality players popping into the club to watch some curling. We love you, Kathy. That sound just to going across the sheets now. A couple of games we never updated. They weren't quite finished when we went off the air for a fifth end break. And sheet four, um, the uh, Dave Thomas and Trent Skeynes game after a five, it is seven to three for Team Skeynes. On ice five, after five ends, it is seven to three for Team Smith over Team Tipple. And on ice six, it is eight to two for Team Simmons over Team Hancock. So now back to Ice 3, and our feature game today is um, Team Walters and Team Lambswood. You know, this uh, Harold Walters team, um, this is actually, I don't know if you guys mentioned already, but this is actually Randy Turpin's team. All of Randy Turpin's team, and then Randy Turpin stepped out, and Harold Walters filled in that position. So it's basically Team Turpin plus Harold Walters. Okay, we, we can go with that. Yeah. We can give a shout-out to Randy Turpin. That's right. Obviously, he couldn't couldn't get the time or couldn't make it or something came up. But his team obviously wanted to play, so here we are. Oh, and Evan, yeah, of course. Evan uh, doesn't normally play with Team Turpin, but uh, Evan always ready to step in for any team at any time. So here he is playing with Team Alters. Well, I think uh, on the lineup sheet, uh, Sean Hawk with the lead here is the fifth, and Steve Butledge is the normal lead. That's right. But obviously he couldn't play today, this afternoon, and they have uh, their fifth player step in, Sean Hockel. Remind me again, uh, Mark, you know, you're, you're, you're big on the nicknames, of course, right? Huge with the nicknames. Huge with the nicknames. So uh, what's Rutledge's nickname now? Who? Rutledge. Trip. Trip. Yeah. Where'd that come from? It's a long story, Sam. I don't know. we got enough time to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call you, Mark? Loot. Loot? L U T. Uh, we, we won't even try that. I'm not even going to try no. to explain that one. But on our senior team this year, we had Bundy, Loot, Sporty, and Cheeks. Of course we did. Because so, why wouldn't you? Uh, any nicknames on your team, Sam? I don't know. The furthest we go is Nathan goes to Nate. Okay. That's, that's about not, it. That's not much of a nickname. No, that's not. Maybe Skipper? Would you call that a nickname? Not really. No. Uh, oh. Now, you have a nickname, though. <laughs> Sammy boy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Only you, Mark knows. We have, you have a couple one. more than that, but we're going to stick with Sammy yeah, that's boy. That's right. <laughs> Looks like a missed freeze attempt from Team Walters gives McNeil Lambswood the opportunity to hit and stick too early here in this uh, sixth end. Looks like the rock is hanging out a bit, so it will be just a hit and roll out, and they'll leave their rock somewhat buried behind the center line guard. There's been a few rollouts this game, and most of them have been on the outside. So uh, I think teams are getting fooled by, they throw draw weight, and it, it, it really comes hard from around the hog line in. But when the, the weight's elevated up to uh, like a nine or nine and a half second hit, they're not getting the same kind of finish wide. Right. And as the game goes on, it's bound to straighten up a little bit anyways. The paths get worn. You might still get a bit of curl wide because the pebbles held up a bit. Right. But down in the middle part of the sheet, is it's a uh, you know, I hear a lot of the tour more players more call that the crunchy stuff. That crunchy stuff? There's lots of names on it. Well, it looks like um, Evans Rock may have picked early at his hand, or like you said earlier, yeah, that the seemed to be might gone, have dumped. That seemed to be gone pretty early. So Harold's going to try to get this out of the a, house. That's not a bad result for a Rock to pick. They got it out and did get a biter. I don't know if we can tell Sam from looking at her uh, computer here how many people we got 
partaking and viewing the game here. Mm, let's check it out. There's probably somewhere we can tell. And a shot here now by uh, Team Lambton. And a nice hit and roll back into the center, which will force um, Team Walters to play a hit. They can play the double or roll. He uh, looks like Harold's just going to play the hit and roll. So to make that roll, you're probably going to jam one in the forefoot. But if you can roll behind the corner, puts it a bit of squeeze back on uh, Team Lambswood. And uh, we have 88 viewers across the country. That's right. Just and, filling the stream. And we just had another rock pick by Evan Curley on a takeout. So there must be something uh, as two in a row to seem to grab on him. But no, that's tough. It, it changes the end for sure with some picks because it's totally out of the team's control. Totally. And so like that, how I would coach juniors, you got to forget about it. you got to park it and just carry on and deal with what you got in front of you. These teams might think about um, you know keeping a broom down early on the, on the shots and yep. making sure they don't pick up some extra stuff that might be on the well, ice. The thing about it, it was a good opportunity here for Lampswood to get a good guard on this, but they were, I don't know, a combination of not enough ice or if uh, Daniel Bruce was a little tight here, but uh, it's still leaving Harold the same shot. I don't know. If he's just going to play through it or if he's... I, I think, think I, I'd love to see a little, like, uh, normal weight hit uh, right on the nose and stay in front of their blue rock. Wouldn't and be a bad shot. Or he could play that He could play that hit and he can ro even roll behind the center guard. Yep. Nice plan A and plan B sorted. So it was opportunity. Mark's almost like he played skip your whole life. Almost like that. Sam. Almost. All almost. the way. Looks like this rock is running uh, pretty good. If they can hold up, he might get a nice John's little roll. John's working hard on this. Watch the roll under the guard. Not quite under the guard roll, a little too far, but they are shot rock. The key there, Mark, is they got the rocks out of the forefoot, out of the button, so now Harold's got both uh, both draws to the forefoot. Absolutely. He's not really set up for a, a deuce or anything yet, but uh, he's going to have access to score. Lambs was going to try to play a hit and roll back underneath here. But he doesn't want to roll too far and come out on the other side to give uh, access to a double to Team Walters. So a hit and stay here, or even a hit, if you roll wide, is not the end of the world. But this is starting to curl this on This rock is curling hard. Aaron's going to have to work this really hard to get it by the guard and then to try to make contact with the yellow. I think it's bye-bye, Bonzo. And that's what you call a flash, folks. I heard it going by, whoosh, and that's what happens. So I don't know if they just, um, it looked to me like he got out to the broom. So maybe not enough ice for the weight that was thrown, or he looks pretty surprised by it. You know, I, I could see right down his line, Mark, and it looked like he threw the rock well. He had a nice set to his release. So I'm not sure what might have happened there. Not so enough that, ice. That's a couple of picks this in and a couple of rocks that overcurl. So maybe the ice is starting to change, and the teams have just not quite picked up on it here. You know, normally the team that wins the mark is the one that picks up on the ice the fastest. Two rocks ago, Walters was in trouble, and now he's drawn to lie, too. This line is pretty good here. So the key here is not to lose the line, hey? Yeah, they got to keep the line on it. they got to get it in for second shot. It's going to be close. you got to work hard on this one, Mark. I don't know if they're going to be second. It's in the rings. Okay, a little short. And probably uh, it would have well over curled a little bit also. So the unfortunate part about that is they lost access now. They can't even hit that blue rock. Well, that's the downside. Do you think in the fifth end, you know, like in the, oh no, this is the sixth end, even in the sixth end, it would have been okay to play like a hack weight shot and try to come to the nose of that blue as opposed to playing the draw? Who knows? They had options there, and it is what it is. But, but Bruce is going to have another crack now, Daniel Bruce, at this hit and roll. So he looks to me like he's tightened up the ice a little tiny, but I think he's going to throw a little more weight. Yeah, we fortunately thought, we here. We talked about this a little earlier, about uh, the down weight were really starting to bend from the outside in, and if you up your weight was you know a 9.5 or a 9, they, you weren't getting the same curl. Yeah, he's going to make sure to make contact with this yellow. Oh, he's got, he's got the yellow this time. Now, that's not bending like that last one, which... 
Edwards and the New York Jets and playing to win the game. And, uh, oh, a completely different, threw more weight uh, Ryan Lamsley did on that one than what he asked Bruce for. And as a result, he got a completely different amount of curl. So I think they might have got fooled by the ice on a couple of shots this end, and now they're a little gun shy. Yeah. They, I think he was afraid to play that down weight again and just threw a, that was probably a 9 or a 9-5. Yeah, definitely. So here we go again. Chance here now for the way that curls. There might be a chance to make that double. I was almost wondering maybe if you could play like a firm or a down normal weight. Uh, you only got to push it a foot. That's right. Looks like the call was just a hit and roll though, Mark. They got Evan on this right away. Whoa. Looks like he got lots of line. back off. Looks might have been a bit of a panic call out of Scott Eaton early. Well, on, on my team this year, that's what we would call a bad line call. <laughs> no, I think, again... Um, Hard to say it was a bad line, line call. I think some of the boat teams are a little shy. I mean, a few rocks that did things this end, I don't think either team expected. Right. And now I think they're anticipating curl, and they're not getting it, but they're keeping their weight firm. So it's a combination of a couple of things. Right. A little panic on sweeping, but more weight. Line if, holds. If, if he threw a little quieter, you would get some of that curl. Right. And the line call would have been fine. Right. And I think both teams have been affected by it. You know, even though it looks as though Team uh, Walters is going to get the force in this end, um, or they're going to be forced this end, it's still not a bad time to get forced. The sixth end, no. keep the hammer in the even Lambs ends. Would just, uh, Ryan just got to hit and stay here. Keep the force on. Yeah, that's a good shot. Will they threaten the double, do you think? Well... Personally, I'd rather take one and be up. Yep. And in that situation, I'd probably just draw for one. You only got to be full eight foot. Right. Because if you play the hit for one, you got to roll. So I would just draw for one. I'd rather be up one after six. Definitely. Now, again, you can play a much tougher shot for two. If you get two, great. But if you don't make it, you're giving up one. And then you're right. down one after six. I'd yeah. rather be up one. So I look at the scoreboard. Yeah, I agree. If, I, if the score was five to four or, or four to three, and I was up one, yeah, I might take a go at it to get two, because yeah. if I miss it, I'm only tied. Right. And it totally changes the uh, look of the game, because I suppose the eighth end, and as opposed to this next end being the second last end, now we're only going into the seventh end and a ten end game. Yeah. And a ten end game. Yeah. We have a lot of game left. But I think there's lots of teams here that would take a go at the double, but I think the, my experience tells me take one. Yeah. Uh, it's got to curl a bit, but this it's could curling. be... This could, it's curling. He's going to be close, folks. He's going to be close. He's going to be close. Oh, oh, so close. That was a great effort from Harold Walters for the double. Steal a one for Lambs. But it will be a steal of one. So after six ends, score 5-4 for Team Lambswood. And we got a close game going, folks. It's been back and forth. That end, we had some... Uh, I think both teams got fooled on a couple of shots by the ice. Looks like there was a couple of picks. and uh, maybe Just as it would have been an important score for uh, Team Walters, it's an equally as important steal equally. for Team mcneil Lambswood. Big steal for Lambswood. Well, now if he, can for, if he can force in seven Walters to get one, uh, three ends to go, he'd have two hammers to one and control the hammer in the even ends. Definitely. So it's a, it's a big steal. Big advantage here for Team McNeil and I think it's a one. It's only one point, and you're only up one. But I think it could change how the game plays out in the next four. The ends. momentum of this game has totally been shifted, as the great Michael Scott from the Office would say. Oh, how the turntables! <laughs> Gotta love those quotes, Sammy <laughs> boy. You watch way much, too, way too much TV. Maybe just a little bit. I'm more I'm more about the sports quotes like uh, Bob Cole in hockey when he used to say, "Oh baby, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a keeper, man. That's a keeper." One day we're gonna say, I remember when old Mark knows where they used to say, 
Oh, baby! But that's in that full. I give full credit to Bob Call, Newfoundland's own announcer, and uh, arguably the best broadcaster hockey night in Canada ever had. Agreed. In my in my estimate estimation, anyway. Yep. In your, as they say, in your humble opinion. In my humble opinion. But you got to realize, I mean, we're up here now, and we don't, we're not in the booth, so we're open to all the jibber jabber of the fans up here. And you right. always got a few fans making fun of people up here, right? <laughs> so you know, you got you got a Kathy Rogers over there just making a fool of herself, <laughs> making fun of us, <laughs> and you know, you get, she doesn't rem she doesn't know understand. We have the last word here. That's right. We're the ones on the hot yeah. mic. Yeah. Hot mic. You know, it's interesting here in the seventh end, you'd expect uh, a tight guard to go up, but it looked like Aaron's first rock slipped in, which gives Harold the opportunity to blank this end and uh, retain the hammer back into the even ends, which is, again, kind of flips the flips the advantage from McNeil Amswood. But the thing about holding the tankard also now, just before we get back into the game here, um, you know, we get people coming from out of Saint, outside St. John's to come into St. John's to watch the tankard. Yep. Just to our left here now is Dr. Scott Lamswood, Ryan's dad, who came in from Stephenville to watch the game. Yep. And I was talking to Daniel Bruce before the game started. He thinks his dad is going to come in and watch the game. Yeah, Dennis, yeah, Dennis. good man. So, you know, and I, I would bet that Aaron's parents are both going to come in from Gander. Oh, guaranteed. You know Shelly's coming in. Right. So, you know, and uh, on Team Skeins, they have an import player who's from Newfoundland, so he has birthright to play here, uh, Matthew Blanford. His wife is the coach. She's from Alberta. Oh, that's who it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, of course, Matt, when Matt was uh, big into the juniors, that was a little before our time, so we didn't know Matt until he came back this year. Uh, or was it Alberta, you said? He lives in Alberta. Right. Up around Coal Lake. Everyone go check them out, Cold Lake, Alberta. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just north of where my daughter lives. My daughter lives in Lloyd Minster. Okay. So a shout-out to Nicole. There you go. Actually, a shout-out to my daughter. i got to give a shout-out to my son, Matthew, in Calgary. Right. So, well, we're doing shout-outs, man. i got a shout-out, Katie Follett, now living in Memphis, Tennessee. It's my sister. <laughs> well, my, my son's girlfriend, Brittany Tran, is defending Alberta Ladies Champion, and they start tomorrow. <laughs> Who else we got, Nate? Who else we got? <laughs> Shout out. Oh, yes. Shout, shout out to uh, our, our missing player, Nate Locke, currently in South Korea, watching his sister compete as Team Canada Youth Olympics Mixed Doubles. Uh, best of luck to Kaylee Locke and Simon Perry. We know you guys uh, will compete well. We're very, very proud of you here, all of us here at the St. John's Curling Club. Well, we were, Nathan and I were talking about that before the break, about the quality of players here, and then just referencing two of our junior players here are, are competing at for, for Canada as the Canadian contingent at the Youth and Olympic Games over in uh, South Korea. So it's a it's a pretty big deal. And for those people that never knew, uh, Nathan Young, who was helping on the broadcast uh, before the first uh, before the halftime break, uh, also competed in the in the last Youth Olympics for Canada in uh, team mixed doubles and in team mixed and in uh, mixed doubles and won the gold medal in the mixed doubles event with so his partner from uh, Hungary Laura Nagy the depth of uh, talent in Newfoundland curling is well understated you know we have a lot of great uh, great competitors so we just got our first final score folks on sheet four Trent Skeins, uh only six ends a six end game Trent Skeins, 11, Dave Thomas, 3. So, the uh, two more games on ice, uh, 5 and 6. Uh, I'm assuming that they're still on. Sheet 6 actually just finished up, I believe, uh, I believe, Mark. Okay, that it's looks like, like, like it's 11-2. to two. Sheet 6, Team Simmons over Team Hancock. Looks like a final game. And I'm not sure about what happened on ice five. That's a Greg Smith win, Mark. So the only close game we got going and still going on on sheet three here. Lamb, team Lambswood versus Team um, Walters. 
And not yeah, much, getting, not much happening this end. We're getting treated to a great game, although this looks like it's probably going to be a blanked end. Well, I think Harold, from his point of view, after giving up the steal in six, if he can get the blank in seven, it changes the dynamic again. Yeah. Now it gives him two hammers to one, but he controls the even ends right. in a one-point game. Yep. Which, Just as we which said, is how, which is what I would have wanted to do. Yes, absolutely. Because it's all about having in a close game. It's all about having the hammer coming home. And, you know, once you get to the second half after the fifth end, that's what you're trying to figure out. How do yeah, we have yeah. the hammer coming yeah. home? All right, just got a text from the Felthams. They will be in tomorrow. Okay, so they must be watching. Confirmation. Shout out to uh, Rod and his lovely wife out in Gander. They, they're, they're one of our 88 people watching the broadcast. Tonight. Oh, Scott Eaton. We got a a flash there, folks. That's a not a good miss. Looks like they were surprised by how much it curled. But now Landsworth has a chance to split the rings here, try to get the force on, which is what he would want to do. It looked like it, this wasn't. They weren't. It looked like they weren't going to have a chance to do this. But then they got that, uh, got that miss out of Scott Eaton, and now the fort looks like the force might be back on again. Yeah, this is a key shot here from Daniel. Try to split the house, and uh, somewhat guarantee a force in this end. Yeah, that's right. Well, if it comes a little deeper, I think uh, Harold's going to at least have a go at a double. Yep. And you might as well try it because you got nothing to lose. You got to, if you're going to be forced to take one anyway, yeah. you might as well try to get out of it. Now, to me, out that far with any kind of weight, I don't know if it's going to curl that much if you if you hit the broom. But he looked like he was tight to me. I think it's going to be really close. It's going to be a big roll. Oh, not too no, not a big roll. A couple of feet. Get it across, get it back into the center That's line. That's a good shot because a nose hit back here from McNeil Amsville will leave Harold with a double. Yep. I think now uh, Lambsville would like to hit and just roll roll to the open side a little bit, take away the double, or at least make it you know, a little bit tougher. But even if he noses this, it's a thin double. So... Yeah, Team Lambert, they would be happy if they could force Walters to one here. Definitely. And have the hammer play an eight. Yeah, just as Daniel's uh, last shot was crucial to split the house, uh, this is equally or more so important that uh, not only do they remove the Yellowstone from play, but they also stick their shooter in the house. Ideally, somewhere over, over there. He looks like he got a nice shot here. A little roll. Yep. I think the Good double's shot. still there, but it's uh, you know you're looking at about a six foot, a six foot double. But I think right. if you're Team Walters, I think you got to play it. It'll require some weight. You're going to have to take one anyway. Now, even if you you could hit and roll right on top of that, pretty that would precise. Be a great shot. But, but yep. if you're playing the double, and it doesn't quite curl enough to make the double. That could be an option also. Yep. Or even if you roll right over Biden and you're not frozen to it, it makes the hit to stay for two difficult for Team Lambswood. And you might get a rollout or they roll a little too far and you might the blank could still be on. The key about it here is you gotta if you roll right over somewhere close, even if you don't make the double, yep. the blank might still be an option. Definitely. Grouping those rocks. Because in a nine team round robin, every single game is important. Bless you, Mark. What do you say? Uh, you know, we got the peanut gallery behind us, can't Sammy boy. <laughs> yep. Can't keep away from America. Yep.
Hit and stay here now by uh, Lambswood, and it's probably going to be a, actually a hit and stay here might force uh, Harold to either play a hit and roll or a draw against two into the middle. So it's a big shot here for Lambswood to try to keep the force alive. Horton shot. Again, they're just throwing that nice control weight. Now, this is where yeah, Walters early. two wins ago lost it. Now, he had nice weight. Now, I don't think he can hit and stay. I think he got to be playing as a hit, he got to roll a bit. Yeah, and not only that, but I'd say he's going to have to uh, hit the side one. Or, you know, you can just play the straight out turn draw. Yep. Now, I got to go wide because that's where all that curl is. Yes. Yeah, we saw that earlier. Or you could hit the second to the. The second shot, and you, but you still got to roll. But you got more room to roll on the second shot rock. You got six feet or seven feet across the back of the four foot, back of the eight foot. So if I was going to play a hit and roll. This is entirely a skip preference shot, hey? Well, I think the shot, if you're going to play a hit and roll, you play the, the second shot. You got more room. You got a bigger margin of error. Me personally, I would just draw. And I'm thinking, Sam, your team with Nathan, I think you guys would just play the draw. Oh, well, at that, Skipper. What's your preference here in this situation? You got two rocks in play. If you hit the top one, you have to roll. If you hit the side one, you got to roll. Or you could just draw. What are you playing? Hmm. And again, Nathan, <laughs> Nathan Young, man of many words. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those situations. Make Things sure you that on make this you go hard mm. now, <laughs> Yeah, well, with hammer, you draw around here, try to get your two because you know you have a full eight foot draw. Worst case scenario. Oh God, definitely draw. I think I think a lot of experienced kids here would just draw for one, but this rock got it got wheels. It got wheels. Like they it, say it when you hit stop. a putt a little hard, hit a house. It it got wheels. And it is bye-bye birdie. And a huge miss by Harold Walters. Steal a two for Team Landwood. Up three. Up seven four after seven ends. And that completely changes the dynamic of this game, folks. Completely. It's coming back. We have Nathan Young back in the booth there now. Sam Fowler bailed. But anyway, here we go. Three ends to go. So I think Lambs was just going to play this in. And he's going to some, some defense this end in the eighth end. He has complete control of this game now being up three. And uh, I think Walters is going to have to press the issue. To, the, he really needs a deuce here to realistically have a chance at a win. So he's going to have to push the envelope. And when that happens, sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. That's yeah, so good. given the score here now, not surprised to see uh, Team Lam McNeil Lambs would throw this one in the house. Well, Harold's going to go with the corner guard. Which is all pretty much textbook, textbook stuff here. They're going to throw the corner, and then Lambs are going to play a tight guard or a bump on his own. And then Walters might even throw a second corner or a corner around a corner, depending where the first one is, or just come around the corner. So he had a couple options, but. But you want this at least halfway or what would be considered zone two good that one where that one stopped in the house it's in a tricky spot guard is like you, you leave a, quite a bit of room to draw around the tap is a hard shot it's sort of kind of in between that looks seems like they're going for the tap well you got to play i think up to you play it tight or it, you just tap it yeah uh, now if you tap it and you can get it into the four foot at some point Team Walter's got to come back to it. Right. Sometimes I think so. it might even be easier to just draw around it. 
If you're half open on the left side, that's not that bad. Either. No. Perhaps a hard shot. Line looks pretty good here. It looks curl a little out there now. firm. Nice looking shot. If you can keep the line on it, you got a you got great line. Uh, that's a nice shot by Aaron. Aaron Felton. Good cut line call. Good sweeping by the front end. Almost as if you just drew around it. <laughs> now the thing about this playing in on the, your lead second rack, first time, first crack that Lambsup gets, that guard is going to be gone because that's the only rock that ca is causing them grief. Now, Walter is going to put up a second guard on the other side. The thing about that, folks, is depending where it's placed, it could access Harold's ability to draw to the forefoot because the, the corner guards may be in the way. So that's why you got you to gotta factor in how much curl on, is on the outside because now you could be limiting your access in case you get in trouble to score. Because the way this sheet has been, there's a there's a big curl from the hog line in. Great, great guards there, level. If a bit more room to get to the forefoot, if you got to draw on that side that they just threw on, the guard on the other side of the sheet is a little tighter to the center line, which could impede his draw to the forefoot. So it's just something for viewers to be aware of. Well, on, on the curl your ice, you want the corner guards to be a little tighter to the rings. For that, many reasons. For many reasons. One of those being... Being able to draw to the forefoot. Correct. Also, the higher the guard, the more, and there's a lot of, a lot of curl, the more room you have to get played down weight and, and hit the rock out or behind it. But another reason for a long guard is you can get more behind it. More rocks of your same color behind it. In theory. Uh, as a person I used to know once said, take her deep, boys. Make, <laughs> make room for loads more. So when you're down, you got to think about that stuff. But anyway, this is a well-placed guard by uh, Graham Weagle. I think Harold's got to play down, yep, what he's indicating. Try to get down on top of that one, maybe push it back a hair. Nice to, nice to bump it. He could hit and try to open up the complete front, but if you don't make it, they're just, Lambs are just going to throw another guard back, and then you're no further ahead and you wasted a shot. So. At this point, it's, you just have to make some shots. And unfortunately, you might not get the luxury of those shots being on the easier side. They might be on the harder, more difficult side. I mean, in theory, if they make this shot, they're in a really good position. They'll have three corner guards, no blues in the house. The risk is, well, on the off chance that we don't make it, he was on and off this one the whole, the whole way down. This one looks close. Oh, what a great shot. Great shot. What a great shot from Evan Kearley. And they spill the blues off the center line, off the forefoot, and they're left with three corner guards. So although to those blues didn't go out of the rings, it's not a concern for Team Walters. They'll actually, they might like to use those rocks later on, especially the one back to you. Given those three corner guards. No, that was a nice shot. We don't see Open everything up. You don't see Ryan running up there to peel those guards. Uh, well, there's three. You're not going to get rid of all of them. So he's going to stay on the offense here now. That one's going to curl on him. But as long as he gets this top of the eight foot here, it stops, it stops to come around freeze by Team Walters. Line looks pretty good here, but it might be coming a bit too deep. A 14-3. So remember earlier in this game, we were getting about a 15, a 15 seconds to the T-line. Okay. Oh, that one on That's its own. So bad. It does seem to be slowing down a little bit. I think Walters is going to play down to it. Yep, there you go. Actually, if he can just tap it here to take the freeze off and stay frozen to it, I think it would be the ideal shot. Evan Kearley now, after throwing a big weight double run back, coming down with a draw. It looks like it got loads of speed. This will curl. Starting to go there now. Uh, needs to curl a bit yet. Evan Here tends to get a little bit more curl on his stones. They gotta go to keep the line on it. There's a unique tool. The same split they hog to hog. Keep the line on it could be a pistol. Uh, over curl the hair. Still not a bad shot because he's mostly or almost all or mostly all behind that that long guard, and he may be second shot. 
That was also a 14-3 hog to hog. Not sure was... who's second shot here, but regardless, looks like uh, Ryan Lambert was going to throw a guard. So an interesting situation now we, with your team McNeil Lambs. With your shot rock, there's not uh, an easy way for Team Walters to score their two points. Yet the play seems to be forced over to the right. Well, Lambs have got to be careful. This right now is up for him. It's all about the placement of the of the stones. Don't love the guard call here. No, I'm not big on the guard call either, Nathan, because Harold's going to come around it. Absolutely. Not now, sure if that was what they were calling now, or not, but... You can come around that perfectly, but another bad shot here, if you want to play that outside blue one, because that yellow rock is going nowhere, and you're going to be completely sunk. Right. Well, that might be a shot. They need to get their second point in there. It may, it may be. So they but, get their second point in here now, and Team Walters will have that slash later in the end, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I guess if they make this, Mark, uh, Ryan will run, play that run back on the one they just Well, again, it all depends right? exactly where it is. But there's a high likelihood of that happening. But they still got to make curl. this come around freeze, and that look tight to me. Got a little soft on this one. That soft release will mean that the rock just was pushed inwards, I think same he, direction as the gonna curl. Get, he's going to get by, but it is he he's heavy. A 14 seconds. We're looking for that 14-3. This would just be back just. four foot. Uh, great attempt. No, that's, still good enough. That slash is coming into play. Still good enough. You can tell now. Because you can make that slash on that outside blue one and lie too. Uh, for sure. And again, Team so That's why I don't, think, I don't think Landwood can play the guard here now. No. He plays the guard, and Harold ever plays that outside blue one, he's lying too sunk. And, and McNeil Landwood would have discarded his only shot, which would, yeah, would be the draw behind. I, I see why the guard is thought of here, like... To just block, block. Well, if you're going to put the guard, you got you got to make sure it stays on the center line so they can't draw around. But if it overcurls at all, they could still draw around. But right. you got to slash the light too. There's also a draw. The Ryan could draw himself behind his guard there now. Now this is going to the round where he said he wanted it. It just be tight guard here. But you're still giving Harold that that come around. Block to draw. Harold's looking at this now. The lie two. There's he needs two. Rock. He needs two to send if he's down three. If he wants to win the curling game, he needs to make. He needs two to keep this game close. One here, and I think it's all done. I like coming on that last rock of of Ryan's. I like coming right around. But we could see a big big shot here, guys, coming up by Scott Eaton. Half a rock. So they make this shot, great outcome. If they happen to hit it a bit too thick, what is McNeil Lamsworth just going to draw around his guard? Half a rock here, and he's going to be lying too, and Lamsworth is going to have to play a raise or come around. Well, if, if it's made. If it's, if it's made. If he doesn't make it, I think, well, then this shot is not going to be there any later. Got to go on this one. No. This one just over curl. Over curl a bit. Oh, oh God. A little bit unfortunate the way those angles worked out. Now, Lambs can put the, as we say in curling, he can put the screws to Harold Walters here now. And Harold's going to be left with a couple of difficult shots to try to salvage in a point. So I guess the, the call is to draw to the forefoot. Whether you play the out turn or the in turn is really dependent on, you know, what well, side you know. I don't think or... he plays the in turn because with that, with that higher curl there on that in turn side, if he opens it up at all, it gives Harold a chance. Right. I think he plays, he can just cap it off with a guard. And then you're leaving right. Harold a hit and roll off that high one to right. get into the forefoot. Right. Then you just guard that side and Harold going to have, can only take one. Right. Which right. is fine. You're up two playing sure. nine. Exactly. Okay. You, you don't mind if he scores one. Even if you give up a two, you have hammer in the last. So the timeout called here from Team McNeil Lamb. So just to discuss the placement of this stone, the 
are indicating towards the guard. I mean, folks, I'm just seeing an outturn draw to the forefoot. Uh, come down through that hole on the left side of the screen as we look at it. Because I think given the curl that Mark just referenced, if Team Neil Amswood does put the guard in that hole, I think Harold will have an intern, wide intern draw to the forefoot for sure. Well, that's an option too, but like you said, he's got... You can't take away every shot from Team Walters. So you're trying to make it difficult that they can't score two. So if Ryan fills the hole, the only way Harold is getting in there is off that outside one. I don't think I don't. He may be able to play an intern by the top yellow one and get and make a draw. I think there's enough. There, there, there seems to be a lot of curls, so that might be an option too. So if that's the case, I think Ryan plays the out turn through the hole. To the, the top four of the forefoot. Yeah. I agree. The four that's my favorite shot yeah. as well. That's the shot I like. Now, you know, you could play this in turn draw, but if it overcurls, then you open it up for him. And he can play the hit then and lie too. So, still discussing in this timeout. Um, you have no real indication as to what shot the team is leaning towards here. They seem to like the guard. We in the booth are seeing the outturn draw to the forefoot. Mm. Timeout has ended now. Clocks are back running, but the team still finalizing their decision. It seems to be but the guard is the call here. I think you indicated you're just playing the guard. Something about that outturn draw doesn't look very appealing from them on the ice. Well, I got no problem with this. I mean, you should know the ice is the is the eighth end, and you know there's been a number of rocks have come down this path in this game. So, well, that guard that the, they threw. I mean, the hold is path. hold is two rocks, two rocks wide, or so, more, or more. So, geez, you could drive two trucks through there, <laughs> not one, two. How wide do you want it? Well, they make this guard. We'll see Team Walters play an intern draw if they think there's enough curl, or if they don't, they'll they might they'll play some kind of in off their own. In which case, Team McNeil Lambs will have some kind of run back in one of the red, the blue. Sorry. Well, Let's split time on this one. He's in the hack here now. Yeah, we're going to check the speed here now also on the ice just to see where we are. It, a hog to hog here on this one. We know it was a, about a 15 earlier in the game. Now it's about a 14 and a half for the T line. Out. Here it comes. Here this it one comes. should be about a 15 and a half or a 16 for a guard. So I got a 16 2 hog to hog. Over curled. S left them the same hole. So not enough ice. They should have this figured out by now. Sometimes later in the game, the ice flattens out. It grabs a little bit. So in, uh, in that middle. draw is still there, or you can play the draw on the intern. Now, what Harold could do, you could play around at the intern with enough weight to hit the yellow on the blue and the blue and push the blue back to the 12 foot and lie second and third. Just to give yourself an option. You are down three, so at some point you got to push the, push the envelope a bit. Here's a near view. Of the overhead, you can see the angles a little bit better here. So, <laughs> we'll go back to this one. No, in the yeah. word, in the words of that famous curler Barry Cody, this is what you call tactics are needed. <laughs> And a, I, yeah, and a bit of luck. Mark, yeah. I'm a little bit surprised that this outturn draw isn't jumping off to either of these teams. You know, uh, nothing has changed with the outturn draw versus the last rock, and even Team McNeil Lambsford didn't like the outturn draw. Well, neither team really liked. I've never really looked at it very hard. No. So maybe they think it's. Uh, that, now, now there, there was a spot there. here. Remember, a few maybe uh, two ends ago, there was a few picks down the outturn yeah. side. Maybe they think there's maybe there's something in the ice. I, I I like the intern draw still. 
But I, I understand now you're going, they're going to play the intern and try to come off the yellow and try to get shot here. <coughs> well, if he doesn't make this, I think Lanswood just caps it off and Harold's going to have a very difficult shot to get one. Harold Walters, first rock here in the eighth end, looking to get by the yellow corner guard and just he's make bought, a play. He's bought, well, it's starting to curl now. Early curling here. Can Evan hold it? He's holding it. Oh, he's by it. He's by the guard. Got to go for the curl here now. Look at this curl. Trying to get to the Look inside of the yellow one. Oh, he needed to push it further. Well, they got... They got they, with the way they're lined up, there's no angle now on the yellows onto those two blue rocks. Well, not given where the guard is. So, otherwise, they might be able to get a drag effect there, but the guard's in the way. The guard's in the way. I don't think he even playing that side. I, I think, think you, you blocked the hole. I agree because you might give Harold a shot by putting a rock over on that. You side. blocked the hole. He's got to play off that yellow one, and even then, it's only for one. So, yeah. So Mark, do you see this wide on the left side, yellow, yellow, back into the blues for potentially three? I do, but, you know, that's a hero shot. But you, I wouldn't guard that shot. over the hole. No. I, I guard the hole. For sure. If he makes that, well, you know what? He had a good view. You shake his hand, and you say a great shot. For sure. And you're still tied with the hammer. Yeah. So I think if this guard is put there, Harold will have no choice but to play that double angle raise, and he might get three out of it. Like I say, you can't guard every shot, so you have to guard the easiest shot, which is the outturn draw. It's a tough angle there. I mean, I'm just trying to think about what Team Walters might have on the right-hand side. If they hit half of the top yellow one, the second yellow one will drag a bit to the left. But I'm not sure it will drag enough to be shot rock. Therefore, I'm not sure if there's even a shot for Team Walters. No, I don't. They're in a bind here. I don't think there's any good options for Team Walters. So what you do is you guard the easiest option he has to score. Again, is there not an outturn turn draw to lie three? For team I don't, he, he doesn't need to lie three. He just got to stop Harold from getting in there. So if he blocks that outturn draw, now if he comes deep enough to stop the double bump on the yellow, would be ideal. Top eight. But even if he doesn't, you're leaving her with a come around chip off the outside <laughs> one or a double bump from 12 feet out yeah. <laughs> just to score. Yeah. So the thing about it, being down three, if they guard the hole and that double double slash in for a possible double for three is there, yeah. I would play it. Me too. Right, because you're down three, either you got to go hard or go home. Well, like we talked about, if you get one here, your odds are very low. Very low. So you got to go for Down two without the hammer playing nine, you're probably only looking at somewhere 5% chance of winning yeah. the game. Yeah. So interesting. Okay, so Mark, what is the final call here? Do you know? I think he's playing plugging up the hole. You think that, that doesn't look No, I don't like know if they talked about bringing it far enough to stop that double run back, which would be nice here. I would have told my sweepers that's where we wanted it, just inside, like just almost next to the other tight blue guard. Right, right. His line is fine. He, is he's going to be right into the forefront. He might hot. have a pistol here. This is that outturn draw we were talking yeah. about. If he gets through that hole, he's got a dandy. 14 3, that's the great weight for the T line. Oh, great shot. Harold's got to make a good shot to score one. He got to follow him down, that's all he got. 
I think there might technically be double angle race triple for three now, but <laughs> all well, of a sudden it became a bit more complicated. He might have to. So we're looking to follow him down here, Mark, right to the pin for one. Well, I think Harold's looking at that double run because you got to look at the scoreboard. You're down three. One, you're probably not going to win the game. No, absolutely not. I would have missed it already. <laughs> Seems like they are playing that out turn draw. Look at this ice. I mean, it really is after coming in, and really after straightening out. Well, big shot here just to keep the game going. You say it's a two foot hole, but that spot. Is is a tricky Why? spot. It, it stays straight, stays straight. Then it just goes so hard. Looks, looks a little wide. He's not through the hole yet. A little hot by the looks Coming of it. Coming there here, now, folks. though. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, there it goes. Got to go, go on the line here. Evan with the sweep. Got to go for weight now. Right to the pin. Short. Steal of uh. one. Steal of one for Lambswood. Eight to four after eight. That was a 14-7 hog to hog, and that makes sense. Yep, just a little light. Surprised with the sweeping, though. It didn't get a little further, but... Well, the game is still going, but... I guess you're looking at the 2 or 3 in the ninth, and big steal in the 10th. Steal in the 11th. Well, Walter has got to go all in now, for sure. All right, folks, we are starting here in the ninth end. Ryan McNeil Lambswood with the first rock up by three. Sorry, up by four in this ninth end after stealing one. Not a surprise to see the first one go top button again. A very well placed oh. rock from. One looks a little light. Well managed rock. Given where that rock ended up, a high guard, I wouldn't be surprised to see Walters put another corner guard on the same side, but Does force Aaron to play an out turn shot versus the turn that he just threw. This one over curling a little bit on them. Sweepers backed right off. Now we got the prime time duo here of uh, Nathan Young and Sam Fallon in the booth. What a roller coaster for the viewers this game. You're really wow. getting a taste of uh, diverse uh, right. voices here. Just people in and out. That one over curl gives Team Walters an opportunity to freeze down to the one in the house. Maybe the most important thing is after this rock, you need to be buried. You need to have one buried behind the guard. You know, I think Harold's best friends right now are rocks in play. He doesn't matter how he doesn't he doesn't care how busy it gets. Right. How many rocks are around? The more rocks are out there, the more options he has. Right. So you know that uh, Ryan will jump up there as soon as he can and start peeling off guards. Yeah, being up four points, uh, the worst thing Rock, Ryan wants to see is, is Rocks in play, although, of course, he just calls the guard. Commentator curse. I'm coming up now, so still can't peel. So this is all about angles here. This one looks a little bit wide. Should start to curl here now. 
trying to get a well positioned rock on the yellow one, maybe angled a little bit on the center line side. Yeah, they're going to look to plug this one up so uh, Harold doesn't have uh, direct access to the yellow rock on the top four foot. Although I don't really think he cares, to be honest with you, whether it's buried or not. He's right. going to keep throwing rocks into that four foot and see how, right. how much he can pile it up. Right. Apparently now we saw him make a nice run back last game draw to follow it up. This one jumped early by the sweepers. Lions definitely, it's curling really hard. They're going to have to work to get it by the front guard. And it looks like they have. It would be a nice shot if they can just freeze it down. Yeah, okay. that's a pretty nice freeze. Okay, a rock in front of the T line and the, the only problem with that outcome, Nate, is they have now they have absolutely no access to that uh <laughs> yeah. blue. They have to hit the deeper yellow and angle it back. Right, or they'll just have to jiggle around those top top yellows and try to make a straight line to that back blue one. So realizing this team in Lambswood throwing up the second guard. Yeah. No risk of any kind of run back. The initial car call was hard line. Then Ryan took them off, and now they're looking to try to get around this. Rock looks to be going a little deeper than what they expected, although good shot. Yeah, great shot there from Graham. And without hesitation, Harold calls another draw into the top four foot. He's just trying to crowd that top four foot. Hope to eventually gain access to the rock on the button. And maybe put a few steel points up on the board. Or at the very worst, force Team McNeil Amswood to take the single point. Hey, what are we going to be looking at for tonight's draw? Well, tonight's draw, we have a full, uh, a full rink here. Um... Of course, the ladies, Scotties, uh, starts tomorrow afternoon. But so tonight we'll have a draw of the men. Um, we have tonight at seven o'clock on sheet three featured uh, will be streamed uh, Team Hancock versus yours truly here, uh, Team Young. On sheet four we will have an, again another streamed sheet Team Greg Smith versus Team Andrew Simmons. On sheet five, Team Skeins versus Team McNeil Lambswood, who we're watching right now. And on sheet six, we'll have Team Dave Thomas versus Team Harold Walters. Great to see the guys from Port of Askin, hey, playing another tankard. Right, they're a staple in this event here, uh, and mo all of curling events in Newfoundland. Definitely. Always um, great competitors. Great competitors, and not only that, really nice guys. Dave Thomas is a Sportsmanship Award winner at our spiel that we host at the St. John's Curling Club, the Rick Rousel Classic. And uh, a couple times, I think maybe he might have won that sportsmanship award. Really nice guy. So again, for the viewers, um, tomorrow will be two draws at 10 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. here at the St. John's Curling Club Remax Center of the Men's Tankard. With the Scotties starting at the same club on Thursday uh, with a 1.30 draw. So... Starting Thursday at 1.30, you'll be able to see some Tankard and Scotty's action for the remainder of the weekend here at the St. John's Curling Club. The Scotty's Provincial Championship has a four-team round robin. If uh, one team goes completely undefeated, they'll be crowned champion. Uh, if not, then they'll have a uh, top two teams will play a single final game. Whereas in the men's event, we have a nine-team round robin. Top three teams make the playoff with the first team uh, getting a bye to the final on Sunday. Championship final on Sunday, I should say. So, great draw. We have Team Walter successfully crowding the forefoot, but the problem is how do they get that blue one out of the right. button? That's definitely going to be a challenge for them. Yeah, whether they can slash that yellow sideways, but I mean that yellow is entirely buried, so they got some work ahead of themselves to get that blue rock off the button. And I think uh, Ryan will be poised just to get uh, the single point here anyways. Sam, what is the call here? Well, actually, believe it or not, I believe Harold still has hammer. So although they got a crowded forefoot, they're, on, they're not shot. So they really got to find a way here. Yeah. 
So trying to block the left-hand side here, Team McNeil Lambswood. Oh, what a great shot. Well managed by the sweep. Another good audible here in this game. The rock was going to overcurl, so Ryan uh, Ryan called a little tick off that top corner guard to roll in and cover up that hole. So it was a great audible there. So here's a view of the house. Uh, X the guards. Just to give an idea of the angles, and you can see how difficult it is to get that blue one off the button. Probably hit the right-hand side yellow one back onto it would be the easiest way, but again, with those guards there, it becomes a bit more difficult. So let's go back to our nice view of the entire situation. So is it worth trying to open up the front at this point, Nate? I mean, a few rocks really left. It's not really much of a choice here. So it looks like there's definitely some type of peel being thrown, whether it's to try to blow it back into the pile or whether it's just to open up the front to give Harold a look at that blue rock. We're not entirely sure, but we're going to find out in about seven seconds. Big weight shot coming now. And Scott can throw it. He can throw it hard. So he might have been initially wide, but it's close. They got this curl sweeper on now, trying to get a little extra curl. Line. This is close, sending it back. Uh, a little unlucky there with his shooter rolling to uh, kind of cover up that corner guard, which is one rock they could have sent into the pile, but Nate, I, might, I think it might be a little uh, inaccessible at this point. Not a whole lot has changed from before that rock for Team Walters. Makes you wonder whether or not uh, they should have come off the sweeping and let it curl up to the nose and send it right back to the pile. Possibly. Yeah, that, that hung. They had to hit that. Yeah. Okay, well, throwing another rock in the way. Ryan Mitney Lamb, so his first rock here in the ninth, is up four without the hammer with the goal of really cutting Harold down to, I would say, anything less than four. Yes. Uh, well, you will, in that case, you'll have this, the lead. Nate, he could give him four, and he'd still be within Toby McDonald's tied with Hammer in the 10th end the tenth rule. 10th so. goal, yeah. No, a great situation. So the challenge now for Team Walters is how can you get that, yell that blue one off the button? And it really is a challenge. A nice guard there from Ryan to block the small port. Harold, oh, uh, he's crouches down. down to look, but there's <laughs> never right. there. Yeah, <laughs> he'll look hard to find nothing. You know what? I want to just pull up this screen again, and um, just look. If you can ever hit the yellow one on the button, very thin. Yes. You can get the blue one out, Definitely. and they are close on that on that side. And, and Nate, even you could play the one on the right side of the forefoot as we see it and try to hit it thin and, and uh, send it back. That's kind right. of your two options, really. And there are run-back angles, so as we zoom out, we can see the center line yellow one can be run back on a bit of an angle. We hit. <laughs> Nate's using his mouse here. Of course, he can see it, but <laughs> our viewers can't. So he's, he's lining up that yellow center line guard to hit the uh, rock on the side of the forefoot as we look at it to try to hit the blue one. I mean, it's a tough shot. It's a low percentage shot, but if you make it, what a beauty. Hey, Nate? Right. That'd be a shot like you would make, Sam? Think so? Oh, my gosh, yes. Wow. You're too kind. You're too kind. Okay. Going with this angle raise. So this angle raise. You know, Nate, they call this a potential gamer. <laughs> if you make this, you're back in it. If you miss this, a nice situation. Could be the game. I guess they're going for it now versus trying to open it up and then going for it on their last rock. Because if you make this, obviously, obviously, yeah. This is really inside. They're working hard on it. Really got to go. It's really close, Nate. It's really close. Really close. Has the curl. Will Might get, get the really double? lucky. Oh Might my really gosh! Lucky. Look at that. Oh, wow. blue is still shot rock, guys. What? Blue is still shot rock, but wow. Uh, what a sequence of events The there, angles Nate. have improved so much. Right now you have a nose hit on the yellow guard for four.
So, yeah, uh, Ryan, knowing that uh, exactly what you said, Nate, with the nose run back for the potential four score, he's going to try to guard that, put his blue rock in the way. So at the very least, maybe it's only two. Right. You know, the four is a little optimistic. This one probably... Which one is that one, Nate? The one on the four foot probably hits the blue and goes over, continues to roll out of the ring to the right. Right. But three, certainly. Okay, so let's move back to this game. So this is, a, this is a crucial shot here in the eighth end of the first draw, the 2024 tankard for Ryan Neal Amswood. He's going to be looking to make a really important guard here to solidify a potential steal point, which could be handshakes. The sweepers are working it hard. Aaron's looking up and down as the rock uh, nears the second hog line. Line is really good. Now it's all about the weight. Sweepers now cleaning it, and Aaron jumps in to get a bit of extra curl. What a great-looking shot. That's a well-thrown, well-judged, well-swept, well-called rock there for Team McNeil Amswood. All right, it's now, this is the gamer shot, Sam, this like you it. referenced. This is it. I only see one. Just an Except now it's only for double. Double run back, double. Double run back for three. It's really a quadruple run back takeout for two. Woo! Those are the ones Harold loves throwing. <laughs> Every skip loves those shots. Yeah. You like them, do you, Nate? Love it. Better than having nothing. That's <laughs> yeah, true. It's very true. I think there's anything well, on in the this case, side. Nate, and this is as close to nothing as you'll ever see. With just something. There's a bit of a conversation. I think they want to make sure they select these shots. Folks, we're happy to have our 121 viewers currently watching this stream and enjoying draw one of uh, the 2024 Tankard. And you've been treated to a pretty good game here, guys. It was a nice and tight game for most of the way. Of course, now Ryan uh, heading out with a four-point lead. But uh, Harold, with a big shot here in the eighth end to try and um, close the gap, tighten the gap, and try to uh, make uh, the tenth end exciting. Harold Walters. Final here he comes. stone here. This is really curling on him. Trying to, will they get a tick off the top blue redirect? No. Sending it back. So it will be a steal of one. And uh, as expected, there's handshakes here. Um, a, a good win for Ryan McNeil Lambswood's team to take a 1-0 in the standings lead. And uh, Harold Walters will move to 0-1 after game one. Lots of tournament left for both teams. Lots of fun left this week. And we're excited to be competing in this late draw. Um, <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining in. We're happy to have you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.